people are so cruel too. like some of the shit that I've seen them do to one another is just brutal, you know, and you can tell the hatred in a person by the way that they kill somebody. Hey, this is Matt Cox and uh, I'm doing a it's not a true crime thing. It's just kind of a true crime podcast or uh, interview with Laura Spalding, and uh, she runs a she runs a Spalding Decom Decon Decon uh, Decon, and it's a it's a crime scene um, cleanup cleanup yeah crime scene cleanup. But she's got a super interesting story, and so we're here, and uh, I'm going to be uh, interviewing her today. Well, you were born were you born in Kansas City? Did you say yeah? Kansas? Ironically, oh, okay, yeah. So I'm, you, where I'm were 49, you? I'm 49, so born in Kansas City and then um, moved around every couple of years. Right. Okay. Dad worked for the feds. Okay. What uh, do you do for the DEA? Fed? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, DEA. And um, moved around all the time. Went to college at Tennessee, University of Tennessee. Okay. First place that hired me uh, took me back to Kansas City. So worked there in uh, law enforcement. Okay. Uh, what'd you do in, uh, so, you know, started out as patrol and stuff and then 18 months into it, um, I went undercover and worked in narcotics. Well, can I ask why, why'd you want to go into law enforcement just because of your dad? Like, is that something you always wanted to do or did you get to that point where it's like, I don't know what I'm going to do? You know, I think it was something that I, I viewed as fun, you know, uh, different every day exciting no monotony i'm not a sit in a desk cubicle person right and i thought you know uh that it would be a good time and it's very diverse right if so if you don't like narcotics you can work in homicide or you right. can work in robbery so there's a lot of potential there um not financially any right. potential at all but um so kind of that's how i did it so I was the first woman uh, there in the unit to be in undercover narcotics, and it was uh, eye-opening, to say the least. Um, street level. We're talking street level type like narcotics. Like making buys? Yep. Like buying, um, not buying, you know, five, ten pounds. We're, we're buying street level crack, methamphetamine, uh, weed at the time. Not not much weed, mostly crack and, and methamphetamine. But you didn't have like any ex other than being a patrol officer. Like you didn't have any real experience None. with anything like that. Like you grew up what like well if normal you were police officer like yeah. middle class like just normal middle class suburbia, not exposed to that at all. Um, so it was it was pretty eye opening. You know, I was in an all black neighborhood, right? So I kind of stuck out like a sore thumb, and uh, especially being the only female. But everybody I was working with in the unit was white, so it was like, man, they're um, like they, that's that's a fifty percent. They 50%, yeah, they figure you're a white guy, you're probably a cop. Yeah, anyway. you're already a cop. Yeah, so, but their answer to that was, you know, they could grow out their beards and look scraggly and all this bullshit. And it's like, it's a superficial thing, but that's not something I could obviously do. Right. So I had to get pretty creative with a persona and what I was going to develop myself into to not be looked at as a cop right so when i was doing vice and the prostitution stuff um contrary to popular belief the worse you look the nastier street hooker type thing the more money you make uh as opposed to what people think like you know escort services dressing nice with you know stilettos and all that it didn't fucking work that way uh you know we wore dirty ass clothes i put um coconut oil in my hair Make it look like you had taken a shower it, in a couple yeah, days. Yeah, taking a or, shower. Yeah. And I use this stuff called Blackout. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It looks like a bottle of nail polish. And you paint it on your teeth. And it looks like your teeth are missing. So it's Blackout, right? So I would do it every kind of fourth or fifth tooth to look like I was a toothless, <laughs> greasy hooker. Right. And, uh, you know, that... And they're lining up. They're lining up. Yeah. They're, it was crazy the amount of dudes pulling up on their lunch break with their beamers and their kids car seat in the oh back asking for a blow job you know um i got an fbi agent on duty in his fbi vehicle on his lunch break and he was like 60 something so it, it's insane like everybody <laughs> thinks yeah it's, no, i'm sorry the faces yeah, connor yeah. makes it's like he's just like oh yeah 
Yeah, yeah. It's just people have this perception of, oh, only the dirty, lonely guys look for hookers. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, fuck no. It's it's no. everybody. Rich, poor, middle class, whatever. Yeah, guys are scumbags yeah. in, in general. How, so how, what does that make you think about? Like, did you have a certain – a, a certain kind of uh, image of what guys were, and then this happens. You're like, wow, these guys are just derelicts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I was like Which 20. Includes you guys. So. Three, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like 23 years old. You know, I didn't know what to think, and you know, I had the kind of the same perception. Oh, this is going to be just fucking, you know, blue collar scumbags coming home from their right. roofing jobs, and uh, I could have been more wrong about who it was and the diversity of who it was. Mm. Well, wasn't it, um, oh gosh, what was the guy's name one time? Um, he was huge too. He was in uh, Four Weddings and a Funeral. Um, Hugh, was it Hugh Grant? Yeah. Hugh Grant like went and picked up like a, a skanky looking. Yeah. Like you're street a, hooker. Yeah. You are a multi millionaire, famous, good looking guy. Yeah. And he figures, eh, let me swing by here. Uh huh. Tap some, uh, some, some skanky looking hooker. It's just yeah. like, what are you thinking? Isn't that bro? insane? Yeah. It's it it's more common than you think and it totally changed my perception on prostitution and you know they were targeting the Johns obviously and it's a supply and demand issue just yeah. fucking regulate it yeah you know yeah, yeah. it's uh just make it legal and reg you're never going to stop it right. it's pointless yeah, you and they would give these dudes $500 tickets with the court date and just let them go well, you know, I was going to say, how much more money would you make if you just charged the girls, tested totally. them, charged them where they say, hey, boom, I got to, right. know, here's my card. If you want to know that I've been tested and here's my card. And I'm, right. You know, then, then you'd make a ton. Of, it's like marijuana. Marijuana. Exactly. Tax the shit out of right. it and regulate it. Right. And now you just, how, how much have you cut down on, on everything else from, you know. The uh, beatings and uh, murders. Yeah, I was going to say prisons yeah. and the arrests and all the money associated with yeah. having to, you know, and then you can. Well, it's just this, it's the same thing, you know. You could actually take that money, and now you could have, you know, rehab clinics and whatever. Totally. Um, you know, kind of like uh, like Amsterdam or something. Yeah, like, along those lines. Well, there's some there isn't there a, a, a maybe one county in Nevada that yeah. that regulates it. It's not it? actually in Vegas. Like it's, it's right. You have to drive like 50 miles outside. Yeah. Outside of the the county, whatever like county. The Bunny Vegas Ranch is. and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's clearly working for them, but right. uh, it's just uh, you just don't want to be the politician. It's hard to be the politician that votes for that. And get reelected, you know. Yeah, because they're hypocritical. America. Yeah, middle class America doesn't want to believe that. No, but they're buying them. Right. They just don't want to put it out. Same thing with marijuana, right? They don't. Well, they don't want to. Probably why that. That's probably why the, the the actual. It's just the, because they know it's so prevalent. Yeah. They don't like. Well, we we, can't, we don't want to throw these guys in jail. Yeah. Let's just hit them for five hundred bucks yeah. on a court date. Right. Embarrass them a little yeah. bit. But let's face it. If you really thought this was a serious, huge problem, well, then you would. These guys would get in six months. Of course. Months. Exactly. Of course, that would. I, that was so funny too. Is like when you do something like that, people don't even realize. Like, people are like, oh, well, he only got six ninety days or six months. Bro, get up and go to jail for six months. Your stuff, everything's gone. Yeah. Like that's devastating. Yeah. You know, you might as well give me five years. Yeah. Like, you get nine, six to six months. You're done. Everything's well, gone. Well, most of them, their wives didn't even find out, or their girlfriends, because they literally got wow. a ticket in their hand and they were home for dinner. So. They, <laughs> They didn't miss a beat. There was a thing in on the uh, the BOP in, in the Bureau of Prisons where guys were getting a shot if they were caught having sex in prison. They were writing shots and mailing them home to their families so that you're. This was when uh, HIV was just kind of coming out. This is yeah. in like the '90s. What does writing shots mean? Oh, I'm sorry. It's a disciplinary act. Oh, okay. So this man, you know, this inmate was caught in a sexual act with another inmate. And then they would send it home to like their family oh. so that they would know, by the way, that your husband went yeah. to jail, your boyfriend went to jail for five years, he's getting out. And while he was inside. He might have that, HIV. Right, yeah. right. They don't do that anymore, yeah. but that no happened shit. for years. So I think they were also probably yeah. lawsuits. Or he's been known to cure insecurity just with his laugh. His organ donation card lists his charisma. His smile is so contagious. Vaccines have been created for it. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't typically commit crime, but when I do, it's bank fraud. Stay greedy, my friends. Support the channel. Join Matthew Cox's Patreon. Something. Um, so what happened with the, you, then you went uh, undercover. Did you go from that to narcotics? Yeah, so I was kind of moonlighting with Vice every, you know, once in a while doing four or six hour shifts 
because it's overwhelming. It's like having the, uh, you know, 7-Eleven and telling everybody it's free gas. That's right. how fucking the lines were. It was insane. It was like nothing I've ever seen before. So there was like four of us, two of us on one corner, two of us on another corner, and we couldn't keep up. So just people pulling in dude, one to buy drugs? Like fucking drive through. No, the sex. Oh, okay. I thought, you, sex I thought you, I was thought you were talking about the narcotics. No, now. so then I kind of segued over to uh, narcotics, and um, that was same thing, you know, um, fish in a barrel. It was just, it's simple. You know, you're you're going in the projects and you're buying, you know, crack or, or methamphetamine and then um, trying to build a case against somebody or, you know, sometimes you would do some street level bust at the time, buy and bust, buy bust. We called it buy bust. Right. Um, but most of the time it's it's at a case level. You know, you're buying repetitively from right. the same person. Yeah, so you're buying and leaving. They yeah. don't even know, they don't they even have know no that there's idea. A, being, a case being built on them. No, and by the time that they get arrested, that they've sold to probably 200 people. They have no idea who it is. Yeah, right. And I never had to really testify to protect my identity. Um, so, I mean, when you go in those neighborhoods, do you ever, you know, ever pull up and, and they go, nah, she's a cop, she's yeah. a cop. They did at the, at the onset when I was kind of really developing a persona. Right. So um, I have uh, an aunt and uncle that were born mentally challenged. And they have a certain way of speaking and I was so used to it as a kid that I was like, that's it. The grease in the hair, the blackout in the teeth, talk like you're mentally challenged. And that was my persona. And it fucking worked. After that, not a single person questioned my identity. They just thought I was, you know, some fucking loser on the, on the streets, another homeless mentally challenged person. That the fucking government threw away, you know, essentially. So you're not driving, are you driving up in a car or sometimes in a car? Sometimes in a car, and these cars are pieces of shit, just shit that they seized. So I'd rotate them. Right. And um, sometimes I'd go with a partner, and uh, we would just kind of do together. But I tried to stay away from the white guys just because that was kind of an easy beacon for a cop. Um, I was going to say, I, I read an article when I was I was locked up. I read an article that was, have you ever heard of Don Diva magazine? No. Well, there was a, or was it Don Diva? There was another, Ma- Maxim. I think it was a Maxim. Oh, okay. It, yeah. It's not around anymore. Yeah. Oh, I don't think it is. Anyway. I don't think this so. This was back yeah, when they I had remember. actual yeah. physical magazines. Right. And there was a girl that was a professional, like, she had a boyfriend, right? She was a black chick. She was a, prof- and she was a, a black chick, and her boyfriend was a drug dealer. He got arrested and went to prison, uh-huh. federal prison. She went to the DEA and said, look, I want to work on cases to get him out of prison. This happens a lot, right? It's called a third-party rule. Yeah. Five. And they were like, look, the problem is he went to trial. We're not going to – we want him to do the 20 years. He's uh, gone. Like we're not – no matter what you do, we're not going to let that credit go to reducing his sentence. It's not going to happen. Okay. So they said, but if you are willing to do this, we'll pay you. Yeah, snitch. It was a professional snitch, right. and she would fly around. They would literally, the DEA came, and they were like, we're going to fly you here for a week, and they'd give her three or $4,000 right. for a week. And she, it's funny because she was in college. She had like a gold tooth, uh-huh. So, and she was raised in, in, like in the projects, but she's also smart. Yeah. So they were like, and she, they go, she could switch. Like she had some tattoos. She had the gold tooth. She said, so she could pull up in a car, and all the drug dealers want to fuck her. Like wow. she's like, so they're ready to, they're, they're yeah. dying to sell to her yeah. and hit her, hit her up. And they were like, so she could pull in a, in a car get, and just, she'd build a bunch of, uh, get a bunch of buys in one week and then jump on a plane, fly back with her money. And it's like every, every month or two, they're flying her back all over the country. They, she was like a professional. She did it for years. Yeah. And then eventually she stopped doing it. Wow. She but, never got made. No. But, and this is a big thing. Nice. They were, the D, they interviewed like the DEA agent mm-hmm. in the mag, in the article. And he was saying the problem was. You know, they could sniff us out. Oh, like yeah. The, she fits in. Like, she, mm-hmm. we can't we, – we, they were like, it's very difficult to pull in a neighborhood cold and have them trust you and sell you something. They yeah. said they could just tell this person's not a drug addict. Yeah. This person doesn't fit the, the mold or the – you know. Yep. The, and, but Jay said she was amazing at it. So, I mean, it, it takes a certain talent. It does. But, we, you know, we had a bunch of snitches that worked with us right. and stuff and that would do the introductions and uh, get us into places that we normally wouldn't be able to get into. Now so they trust you. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it was one day I was like, I had to pay her. And uh, I'm like, she's fucking making more than I am. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
as a, and I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm the one that's at, at danger here. Um, I changed my tune though. I found out a couple years ago that she was murdered. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they finally probably yeah. made her. And uh, but she was, you know, living in the projects. She wasn't a drug user. She was just like. This is this more is money than I'll fucking make working legally. at Dollar General. That's how this girl was. They, they, the great thing about her was she had never been arrested. They said a lot of the, the st- yeah. professional sisters, they said they've been arrested multiple times. Mm-hmm. So it's, if she had to go and testify, they were like, she can get on the on the stand. They'd say, well, what do you do right now? Well, this is what I do full time. Oh, so you're a professional this? Well, I, I do this because I'm in college full time. It's mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, mm-hmm. well, have you ever been arrested? You know, no. Oh, are you a yeah. drug user? No. Oh, there was just like she was perfect. Yeah, so she made bank. I'm sure yeah, she was articulate. Yeah, she was, and she could do the switch uh, back and forth from, you know, being. Did she have to testify a lot, or did they protect no, I think her she, identity? I think she had testified once or twice. Like she was where guys were going to court. Um, wow. And she did actually. I want to say I feel like I like I can't remember the article yeah. verbatim, but I want to say that she she did testify because I remember them saying the great thing about her is yeah. she doesn't have a drug history, so if she has to testify, so to me I feel like she right. testified, yeah, but I don't remember exactly. But they were like she's, they were like she's ideal. It's right. very difficult to find someone like her. Right. But that was also why they were protect. They were flying her oh, out of the absolutely. out of the state. They were flying, and it was the DEA, so it was national. Mm-hmm. If you were a snitch and you're in a small city, like yeah. that's dangerous. Yeah, very dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't in a small city, but I was required to live in the city that I worked, which posed yeah, that's a da- dangerous. S- some danger to me. And uh, it just became one of those things where I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Right. I'm putting my life at risk for $40,000 a year. And this is never going to make a dent on the drug trade. Like, who, who are you fucking kidding here? Right. You know, um, sp- us spending three, $600 a day, that ain't going to do shit. Yeah. So it was one of those things. I'm like, "What the fuck am I doing?" Well, and then, even if you went, even if you went through and you picked up every drug dealer in that city mm-hmm. and removed them all at once, within a month they they've completely been yeah. replaced and it's up and running again. And within two months, yep. it's exactly the same way, and you yep. can change a fucking thing. Exactly. Except for spent a whole bunch of money, right? Created a lot of chaos, taking maybe taking some drugs on the street for a few weeks. It's it's a waste of money for the gov- waste of our money for the government to put money towards stopping drugs it's never going to happen it really is and it's uh like you said someone will be replaced literally 10 minutes later right it's fucking it's never going to go away you know know what's funny is like because i mean obviously i was you know i was locked up and like and i i know people that are on drugs right Mm -hmm. and i've seen you know the tragedy of the of the whole situation and i've i've actually like never done any drugs like i've never mm-hmm. smoked pot i've actually never smoked a cigarette Whoa. never drank yeah. and my father was an alcoholic yeah. and i just at a young age i was like yeah i'm yeah. not gonna i'm not gonna do good that good for you like he's a he's a great guy when he was sober and then he, when he was drunk he was such a scumbag mm-hmm. and i was like well i'm, I'm a borderline asshole yeah sober all the time <laughs> like I, this isn't i know this is not the way to go right but having been through the system it's like absolutely like it wouldn't be a great situation to have drugs legalized because mm-hmm. there'd be you'd see more drug addicts probably out. But in the end, there's no perfect there's no perfect there's no perfect solution. The best solution is legalize it, pay for it, open some rehab centers for those people that want to get help, and and at least you can make enough money that you can clean it up enough. Yeah, that it's safe. Well, and it's kind of survival of the fittest too. Right. You get rid of the ones that are never going to get sober. They're right. never going to stop it. Just give it, give them easier access. Speed up the fucking process. Right. I mean, let's be honest. Well, and and and, but I mean, honestly, too, think about all the violence that's associated with it, too. That's true. You'd get rid that's of a, a ton of violence. Yeah, you would. Um. So what? So how long did did that go on until? I did that for a uh, year and a half, two years. That was a year and a half, two years too long. Right. And I was like, I got to come up with a fucking business here. And uh, we, w- we shared an office with um, the undercovers were in the office with the, uh, we called them SNUTAC, Street Narcotics Tactical Unit. So when we would go build our case, they would run the search warrants. So we, it was like a big giant bullpen. And uh, every time we had a meth case, they were fucking suiting up like spacesuits right with fucking respirators and all this stuff and i'm like wait what are you guys doing oh well we're going to bust a meth lab okay so it's okay for my ass to go in there with nothing 
right. and buy it, but you fuckers get all fucking suited up and protected. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, come on, man. You know, so it's a matter of time before, you know, I gave birth to a kid with four fucking heads right. because I'm going into all these goddamn meth labs, right? So uh, that's when it was another trigger for me that I'm like, this is this is not sustainable. Right. This, there's no way. This could go bad at some point. Yeah, this is going to, there, there's a time limit on everything. That's yeah. why nobody lasts in narcotics for more than a couple of years. Because you, you either get made or you're forced to do something you didn't want to do. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm missing something. Forced to do something such as what? Like crack. Well, oh, okay. Yeah. Like oh, you were put in a position where my you're partner like... was put in a position where he was like, "Smoke the crack, or you're gonna get a bullet in your head." Right. Yeah. So he smoked the crack. Um. So, so, um, so you're going through this whole thing, and you're already thinking, "How do I exit? How the, do I? How get... do I get out of the just not not just not just the unit or the not whole but thing. Just the whole thing? Like there's there's just no there's no." no upward momentum for the i don't want my life to take this trajectory where i'm, I'm no a police way. officer for the rest of my life but yeah but people do and people yeah to each people own, love it. Yeah. but you know i'm not into being in poverty for the rest of my life so it's right. it ain't gonna happen for me so uh i'm racking my brain and i quickly realize i have no fucking transferable skills to get a job anywhere else yeah, right yeah. um yeah it's like that or security i uh, can buy dope <laughs> you can be a, can be a security yeah. guard. Like yeah. I mean, there's no Fuck like there's that. no private no. people, you know, buying dope. No. Well, there are, but yeah, yeah, not for salary. Right. Um, so I was, you know, just trying to figure out what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And uh, I'm like, fuck it. I think I have to go back to school and get my MBA. I've got to diversify. I've got to get away from this because I'm essentially branded myself. Right. All I had done was law enforcement. Right. So I needed to kind of diversify myself. So I'm in, you know, my getting my MBA at night while I'm working during the day. And uh, I'm meeting all these people that are, you know, fucking bankers and financial advisors and all this other bullshit. And I'm like, I don't fucking want to do that. And uh, I go to work one night and this woman asked me when we're coming back to clean up the blood from her son that was murdered. And I was like, oh, we don't do that. She's like, well, then who does? And I'm like, uh, I had no fucking idea. Nobody had ever asked me that, ironically. I'm working in the worst neighborhoods, tons of homicides, tons of suicides, and no one had ever asked me that. So I started asking around, and uh, everybody basically said, we don't know and we don't care. Right. It's not our fucking problem. We go in, we investigate it, we're out. So I started kind of researching it and looking into it. And I'm like, okay, I can do this as a side gig. Let's see where this goes. Right. So it just started out kind of as a side gig, cleaning up crime scenes on my off time. Well, um, what was the first one you did? Like, I mean, did you go out and get some business cards, set up a website, <laughs> or just you just... Yeah, I mean, I had no money, right. as you can imagine. I was making 40 grand a year. I had a roommate, so I couldn't even pay my bills. Um so I found this training school in Dallas, Texas, and I called this fucking guy up. And he was basically doing what I'm doing, but teaching other people how to do it too. So I said, hey, I want to come to your training school. And he said, okay, it's 2500 for a week. And I'm like, fuck, that's all I had in my account. Right. Literally all my savings. So I'm like, fuck it, I'll take my only week of vacation, the last bit that I have in there. And I went to his training school in Dallas. I was in Kansas City, so it went too far. And I met these two guys in there. There was like 20 people in there. And I met these two guys that were from Oklahoma and they were partners. And they're like, we're going to start doing crime scene too. We're nurses by day. So they only work like three days a week. Right. And I said, well, how did you get the money to do your startup? And they're like, we walked into a bank and asked them for an SBA business loan and they gave it to us. So I'm like, no fucking way. Dude literally gives me his exact business plan. Tells me, take it, change the name on it, and go do the same thing. I did that. I got denied at every bank I went into. Okay. Yeah, because I don't have a dick. I, I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to are these two white guys? Yeah. Two, two, okay. Yeah, two white guys. So I call them up and I go, dude, I did exactly what you did. And he's like, I don't get it. And I'm like, of course you don't. So I go into a fifth bank and I lied to him. I say, hey, I need a home equity loan. I right. need new windows on my fucking house. And they're like, okay, give me a check for 15 grand. Right. I'm like, well, that was fucking easy. Why didn't I do that? You know, the beginning. Right. But it, it's that extra, 
I had to lie to him to get him to do yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? But whatever. I don't have any fucking regrets. I paid him off a whole bit. First job, 15 grand. Nice. Double homicide. So how did you, did you, I mean. I, I went door to door. I printed my own shitty little business cards that had the perforations on the bottom. Right. Uh, I had a, the worst website on the planet. I don't, no one found it ever. Right. Uh, I had no idea what I was doing. And I just went door to door. Apartments, funeral homes, hotels. People were, people that you knew had had. No, I just fucking went to everyone in an area, a particular area on every day off that I had I knock on the door. Hey, have you ever had, it's you know, a horrible strategy. It's horrible, but it worked. <laughs> right. It worked because kind of the word of mouth got out and I couldn't afford to hire anybody. So I was doing all my own shit. Right. I was doing the marketing. What year was this? Oh, five. Oh, okay. 2005. Yeah. So social media is just kind of, well, no, geez. yeah, I guess it's just kind of starting out, right? I don't like, remember there being a YouTube because I remember no. on my first job, there was a ton of demo and I was like, how the fuck do I do this? Right. I remember thinking, how do I do this? And there was never a YouTube. So I'm like, you know what I need to do is just basically hire somebody part-time to help me that has skills I don't have, Right. which was construction. Construction? Yeah. Because you have to take out baseboards, pull up tile oh, flooring, okay. replace sub flooring. Like there was, there's a lot involved. And that was something that I was like, oh shit, I didn't realize that. Right. You know, if you've never taken somebody's sub floor before, you probably should learn how to do it before right. you do it. Yeah. So when you take that, do you, are you replacing it? Yeah, so you're when supposed to. So when they're done, when you walk back out, it looks like. It never even happened. Oh, Okay. So yeah. the first place, 15 grand. Yeah, double homicide, 15 grand. And then um, the next place was um, like a Salvation Army where people, yeah, I guess, just lower income people live. And the guy died from whatever and decomposed in his recliner. And uh, in the Salvation Army? Yeah, it was one of those, not the where the homeless people live, but it's like a transition, almost like a halfway house. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know. I mean, I was in the. Their Salvation Army runs them, but I was in the halfway house. It was a, um, a Goodwill, but it's the same thing. Right, so that you have your own little, like, apartment, right, that's furnished? Well, I didn't, but yes, there are people that have yeah. them. And there's actually, I think the one here, they actually have, like, a bunch of single-wide trailers and stuff in the back. Oh, where okay. people also can. Well, this was, like, a high-rise. Okay, so, so and how, he sat, how long did he sit there before they He him? was probably there for a week or two. So I don't think there's, Man, it there's was no, independent no bed, living. No, no bed checks, no, I guess. No, no bed checks there. So, and he was older. So it's probably just, you know, a heart attack or something like that. And he just was there. But I was thinking, how the fuck am I going to get this recliner by myself out? Well, at least you show up after the body's gone, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I couldn't show up with the body was there. Yeah. Not that there's not a bunch of stuff left over. Yeah. You know, you get part of their brain and uh, maggots and all that kind of stuff there but that was the second job and then um how'd you get that recliner out you just take it apart you or? know i i created we were talking about this yesterday i created i took a furniture dolly and i slapped a piece of plywood on top of it and then i put some piping around it and screwed it in and it was like a dolly cart right and i put it on there and pushed it out and just did that and I still have it to this day. That's why we're talking about it. We were reminiscing about the good old days of uh, moving dead guys on a, <laughs> a furniture dolly. <laughs> what was the next one or, or next you interesting know, one? Uh, at that point, the department gave me an ultimatum and oh. said, hey, uh, we were all right with this, but now we're not. It at was the second job? After the second job. I had only been doing it maybe a month or two at the point, at that point. It was a control thing. Right. They, they wanted to be able to not only control my income because we weren't allowed to work off duty. They were controlling everything. So I was like, well, I'm not working off duty because this isn't in a law enforcement capacity. Right, I was going to say. So that's why they initially approved it. And then after that, they were like, you know, we changed our mind. And I was like, yeah, I did too. Fuck you. I quit. Right. So I was out. I literally put all my shit in a garbage bag and I was like, I'm out. And then I'm like, well, wait, why am I fucking staying here then? I hate living in the Midwest. So I packed my shit up, rented my house out and moved to Florida. Okay. After just a few jobs? Yep. 
Like that's that's another gutsy move. Yeah. One to move across just to pack your shit up and just move. Like yeah. that's already are you married? Uh, no. Do you have kids? Single, just, just you. nothing. No kids, no nothing. So I had no obligations other than that house. Right. Um, that mortgage and I put some tenants in there and uh, it was one of those things where if I don't find a fucking tenant, whatever, I'll short sale it, foreclose. I didn't care. I had to get out of that shithole. Right. And I uh, moved to Florida where I went to high school. So I still had friends here. They let me stay with them, found a job in sales, teach me how to sell. And then I did both of those things. And then you started, what you started, uh, did you go to the police, the local police department? Yeah, I, say, I went hey. everywhere, man. What do they say? What do they say when you walk in and say, hey, here's what I do? Thanks, or, but there, no thanks. No. Were there other people there that were doing it? No, because the cops aren't allowed to refer any for-profit company. Okay. So unless you're saying, hey, I've got free clothes for everyone, they ain't going to fucking, they don't care. So what about opening up a, a non-for-profit? Hey, we do this. Or, uh, you, you can still charge for a non for yeah, you can. There was just the regulations for it were way beyond my capacity at that point. Okay. So I'm like, okay, so I pivot. Right. Do the same thing that I did that worked for me in Kansas City. The apartments, the hotels, um, assisted living. Of course, there's a shit ton of 55 and older communities here. Yeah. So I went to all those. Yeah, yeah. And then the phone starts ringing because, of course, I didn't have any money for a website or, a, you know, any type of adwords or traction or anything like that so i was kind of doing them both building them and then in 2008 two years later it was enough to where i could quit my day job okay and but now but now you're doing stuff it's not just like retirement homes now it's it's for the 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 police like they don't call you but so the the victim's families or landlords or owners of what they they call up and say hey listen there was a yeah there was an issue, and, you know, this is what happened. We need somebody to come clean us up. Right. But the cops don't. No. They still won't to this day. I think it's like bullshit. Yeah. Whatever. But, okay. So, and, and you don't contact these people, do you? They're just finding you. Yeah, I mean, there's no way for me to know that if you had a suicide in your house. Well, it could be, I was going to say, newspapers. Or they don't about, post it, suicides. No. What about police reports? How do I get them? How do I know where to go? I mean, can't you go to, you can, I mean, it's public information, right? Well, the the problem is, is it's so dynamic. Right. It's happening so quickly. Right. Yeah, you it's can't impossible. wait two weeks. No. You can't wait two weeks. To, and if it's an open case, they're not going to give you the, no. the freedom of, no, they're going to wait till it's, it could of be. Of course. Could, could, might not be it could be months. Months. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the sense of urgency is there. And the, and the way to get that is when people are freaking out, who the fuck's going to clean this up? Yeah. Where are they going? The internet. Yeah, yeah. So we had, I had to basically suck it up and bite the bullet and put all my marketing efforts on the internet. Okay. Any, are any <clears throat> cases that stand yeah. out to you? Yeah. Oh God. There's just, there's so many. And you know, the thing is, is I've been doing this 17 years now and there's no two that are ever the same, right. which is crazy. And you know, uh, the suicides are always sad in some cases, but a lot of suicides are, um, because they've been diagnosed with maybe a terminal illness and they're just like, fuck it, which I can't say that I blame them. Right? right. Who wants to rot, right. rot away, you know, who wants to live like that? So, uh, and then there's some where, you know, it's like a 16 year old kid and it's like, fuck, those are heavy. Mm. Are, are the, so the, the parents call you and you yeah. come in and you, and, and I was, I was just thinking, I, I had a kid on here who, um, um, his name, what kid? He's, a, he's 30 years old. Uh, his name uh, was uh, Ethan, and Ethan had gotten a phone call from his mother, and she said, and he said, we grew up with guns. Yeah. And he said, you know, he got a phone call from his mom, and his mom goes, Ethan, you know, you got to come home right now. Your brother shot himself. And he thought, yeah, he thought, I thought accidental discharge. Like, he, shot, he was like, oh, okay, is he okay? And she goes, well, I, I don't think he's breathing. And, and she, oh, he was like, oh, fuck. shit. So he drives home, and he walks in, and he said, I'm in my, he was my brother's, he said, skull, brains, everything. He said, bodies on there are all over the back wall. Yeah. And he said he was just like, he said, half his head's missing. Like, he was like, he stuck a gun, I guess, fuck. in his mouth and, and blew his brains out or maybe the side of his head or something. But yeah. And they had no idea it was no. coming. No. And that's the, the odd part is I can't tell you how many people say, we have no idea why or, you know, we didn't see this coming. 
And it and it makes me wonder, did you not see it or did you not look? Right. Because it rarely, in my opinion, happens. They just ignore the the the, the warning signs. Like you didn't yeah. realize it was this big of a Or you're so busy deal. in your day to day that right. you don't realize that your your kid's suffering. And suffering in silence, yeah. which is even worse. So the the homicide. What's hap- What happens with the homicides? Like there's. Yeah, you know, we the cleanups for the homicides are about twelve, thirteen percent of what we do. So thank God they're not a lot. Not that homicides are down by any means. What that means is essentially it's happening in public places, streets, right, parking right, lots, right, right. things like that that they're not getting cleaned up. Um. So so you have to remove. So if somebody gets shot, mm-hmm. somebody shoots themselves in the head or does whatever, or there's decomposition over the course of a week or so. So you're taking up like anything that you're you're. Are you what what happens with the walls? Like are you just repainting the walls? We'll or clean them. You and just clean them and we'll clean them, disinfect them. Uh, if there's bullet holes in the wall, you know, we'll pull the shell casing out of there, repair the drywall, and you know, paint over it, make it look like it right. never, it never happened. We had one recently, um, well, not recently, maybe a year or two ago, and he was a veteran. So a lot of veterans are coming back with fucked up shit. Yeah. And um, he went into his bedroom. He set out a ton of food for his cat and water. And he wrote, never forget on the wall and then shot himself there. And, uh, you know, the never forget part wasn't, you know, a biohazard. We didn't have to clean that. But I'm like, I don't want them to fucking see that. So I washed it off and painted over it. I found some extra paint and painted over it. And then, you know, we ended up having to take his floor, part of his wall. It went into his walk-in closet. Like, right. he just laid against the wall and shot himself. So, of course, it, you know, liquid takes the path of least resistance. So it's going to find its way. Um, I had, I don't know if this, this just made me think of that. Um, so there was a guy named uh, Derek Nolan that mm-hmm. I wrote a book about and, um, he was in prison for a pain clinic, um, that he was running. <laughs> he, yeah. uh, his father, this is his father when he was younger, I think he was like three years old. His mother was having an affair. Mm-hmm. His father ends up in the middle of the night she didn't come home T- two o'clock or something in the morning puts him in his little underoos yeah you know brings him in the truck puts him in the truck drives to the guy's house walks the son him with with his father at two in the morning walks up to the to the window sees his mother laying in bed or laying on the couch with this guy naked father kicks in the front door grabs a knife and stabs the boyfriend to death and then she runs. He ch- chases her down, stabs her to death in front of oh, Derek man. in the driveway. Takes Derek, drops him off at um. Was at his he just brother's. fucking screaming? And he's like he's a I, baby I at that point. He's but. just he's he said I just he said I remember driving off, staring at my mom and thinking he was like I knew I was never going to see her again. Like I, I knew wow. I knew kind of what had happened. Like I understood um, because I remember it. But you know he's. He's a dark guy. Uh, you know, I a, bet. A, a, I don't want to say kind of dark, disturbed, you know, a very serious. Well, actually, he laughs all the time. But anyway, i got a dark sense of humor. So he gets dropped off at his uncle's. His uncle raises him. His father turns himself in, <laughs> goes to trial in New York. Uh, in New York, I want to say New York State, is found uh, is found not guilty due to um, uh, insanity insanity yeah. goes to like a, a for like two years goes to some hospital right mental hospital gets out starts his life over again marries another woman they have two kids Derek's stepbrother and um, this is now Derek's like 20 something years old 21 22 years old the new stepmother decides she wants to get a divorce the father goes, when he served with the divorce papers, he goes and he gets a shotgun. Oh, and when she comes home, he walks into the, I want to say she was in the master 
bedroom closet, walk-in closet. And he walked in with a shotgun and shot her in the head, blew her. Holy out. shit. Then walks out to the cabana by the pool, waits for the police. And when the police come, he pulls his little 38 or 22 out. Shoots himself. Shoots himself. The bullet goes through his eye his eye sockets yeah and out the other so now he's blind he drop passes out loses the he they he had to search around to find the gun and shoot himself again in like just behind the ear this time and kills himself holy shit like i and, and so when you were saying suicide yeah i was thinking to myself i was like I, i'm wondering like how many of these guys are able to do it the first time a lot we do a ton of murder suicides and it's weird because it's always wealthier guys Wow, you know, it's, it's, um, did you ever see that, that there's like, there are these guys, what do they call them? Um, there's a name for guys that kill their, like, like they lose their job and they realize we're going to lose our house. We're going to lose it. And fatalists, fatalists or something. And they kill like their whole family, their, yeah. their three kids, their wife. And then they kill themselves because they can't yeah. imagine their family going on without them. Yep. Fucking I can't believe sandwich. how much it fucking happens. We had a big high profile one up in Carrollwood. It was all over the news. And, uh. It's, it was so fucked up. So basically, he, the guy was divorced, had a daughter that was in college at the time. And the girlfriend and him were like fucking oil and water. You know, it was one of those love-hate relationships, lust, the whole bit. And uh, they're both heavy-ass fucking drinkers. And, it's a uh, good combination. Yeah, right? And they're living together in this nice-ass house. And he is very high up with a, a big Fortune 500 company. And uh, I guess they're fucking fighting. They're drunk the whole bit. He takes a rifle and shoots her in the bed. And then he's like, oh, fuck, what do I do? So wraps her up in the bedding, pulls the car back to the front door, wraps her like a tortilla, puts her in the back of the, um, the uh, it was like a, not a four-door sedan, but like a small SUV. But the windows, like it wasn't, wasn't a trunk is what I'm getting at. So he's trying to get ready to do whatever. I'm assuming dispose of the body. Right. Well, somebody had called to check the welfare. And the cops Just show because up. Because they heard the gunshot? No, because they hadn't heard from her. Okay. In a while. It had been a day or so. So it had been a day or a so. Day. So, so he shot her and she was still. Yeah, he's trying to figure out gone, what, okay. is he, what is he going to do with so her. So he didn't have her in the trunk of the car within an hour. This is day, a think, day or so. Yeah, a day or so. He puts her in the trunk of the car and uh, the cops show up, you know, just check the welfare he gets ready to walk to the door to knock on the door and he sees the wrapped body in the suv and he's like holy fuck so they all back out right and now they're sur they're surrounded the house and this guy has his own gas mask ready so he's got a gas mask he's got he's set up armory of guns in there and uh he makes it well known he ain't coming out and uh, so they're like, fuck. They start shooting tear gas in there. Doesn't even phase the fucking guy because he's got the respirator right. on. He must have been the entire time writing this letter. I did this because of this. Like he explained the whole fucking thing and then ends up shooting himself. So they crash through the front door uh, with the, you know, the battering rams and the whole bit. And he's he's dead in the bed. So the letter basically said, love her to death, but that bitch is toxic as fuck. And, <laughs> she sounds like she's the yeah, problem. Yeah, she's yeah. She's really the problem. Exactly. Yes. But his problem was I could he couldn't walk away from her. Yeah. And uh, I leave everything to my daughter and uh, the personal representative that I want to handle this is a friend. Like he had everything. And then what he did was fucking smart. Instead of writing one letter, he made like 12 photocopies and hid them around the house. So in he, I guess he was afraid that somebody would hide right the letter or misconstrue it so we put it so we actually found the actual letter unbeknownst to us right because he had made so many copies of it it's crazy i mean the this happened just eight or nine months ago the level of of narcissism yes to to plant not not only do i you know i want to have complete control of my life but even at, after my death after I my have death 100 control of i want to have the last word right. that's how i read it right is i need to have the last word yeah i loved her but we were toxic for one another 
she uh it said something like she was forcing me to not see my daughter forcing me to choose her over my daughter so they both were just fucked up yeah yeah and uh yeah so he left a hell of a mess let me tell you oh my god yeah hell of a mess we're a horrible species i know like <laughs> yeah humans are fucks man the the worst predators on the fucking planet yeah um i mean so after seeing all of the, like just everything that you've seen mm -hmm. like what <laughs> Look on your face. I mean, I know what you're like, gonna say. Like, and, what do you? You know, what is your what is your uh, opinion of just humanity? And you general? know, I never had a, he a good opinion to begin with, right. but now it's you just, weren't a big fan. To it's be. in the fucking sewer. You right. know, it really is. Law enforcement often questions him, not because he's suspected of a crime, but because they find him fascinating. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't typically commit crime, but when I do, it's bank fraud. Stay greedy, my friends. Support the channel. Join Matthew Cox's Patreon. You know, when you do what I've done for as long as I've done it, you really, uh, people people just don't value life. It's ex You're expendable. Right. And uh, it's obvious. It's day to day, you know? Oh, man. Man. Yeah. People are so cruel, too. Like, some of the shit that I've seen them do to one another is just brutal, you know? And you can tell the hatred in a person by the way that they kill somebody, mm. you know? Because there's, there's a lot of easy ways to kill people. Yeah. But when you want to blast their fucking head off with a shotgun, that's a hatred right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our I think I've done more murder-suicide cleanups than I've done homicide cleanups. Jeez. And um, dudes just can't stand to be broken up with, I guess. Yeah, that's... Uh, They're just like, you know what? I don't want anybody else to have you, so I'm just going to kill you too. But don't yeah. kill the fucking dog. Come no. on. Is that what happens? They kill the dog too? Sometimes. And she loved that dog. Yeah, but I love the dog. So that's yeah. why I say don't kill the dog. You know, you know, it's just I can clean up eyeballs, brain. Did you see the thing? That, did you but... see the commercial Danny did from Concrete? With the parody? Yeah. You, you know who Danny is? Yeah. Oh, have you done Danny's show? No, but you I saw do... his show on Concrete. Oh, yeah. you should do Danny's. Yeah. Um, he's right. He's right. He's. I yeah, think, that's yeah, what I've heard. Right Julian told me about him. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Yeah. yeah did Julian put you in contact with? Yeah, him? Yeah, I okay. think so. Uh, he did next. Um, so we were coming here first, and then we're gonna go to that one. Oh, okay. Oh, today? No, no. I was no, gonna no. say oh. that's not what my fucking schedule said. <laughs> I still have to reach out to him. Oh, okay. He was like, yeah, he wants to get her on there, so we're gonna. Yeah, yeah, he's great. He's way better at this than me. <laughs> um, like he'll 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 answer like ask like because trust me in the comment section people will be like bro like you could have asked her this you could uh, ask this yeah, you should have yeah. said that I'll be like oh, I didn't even think about that. Um, but was uh, oh Danny did a commercial one time. This is whole it's hilarious where the guy his girlfriend gets deployed because he makes commercial. You can leave all this in here. It's like Danny his girl. I showed you this commercial. Do you remember? That? It's hilarious. It's in such a sick sick. sick like I died laughing. I died laughing. Um, some people are like. <laughs> Oh my god, it's horrible! I'm like, oh well, you're too serious. So, where Danny, there's a guy and his girlfriend. Like the, the commercial is the guy and his girlfriend and and her Labrador, and they're watching the movie. They're at the movies, watch or you know, sitting on the couch watching the movie. They're they're running on the beach. They're in love. They're together. She, you can tell she loves her dog. Yeah. And everything. So then one day they're laying in bed and the phone rings and she gets a phone call and she's like, and she looks at him like and he's like, oh my god, she's packing up her stuff. She's in the military. Oh, packs up her stuff, puts on her vest, puts on everything as her bag or duffel bag. He drives her with the dog, yeah. drives to the, the airport. She's telling the dog goodbye. It's a beautiful, it's very romantic. Like you're like, this is so sweet. Like there's the music. Mm -hmm. And then, so then he goes and you can see him with the dog at night, sleeping the dog, walking the dog. He's alone. She's gone. Yeah. Then he drives back to the airport. I'm dating it in Tampa International. I like, had to get a permit and everything. And they're in the parking garage. And he's sitting there with the dog waiting. And all of a sudden, she comes out. And there's this massive, like, six-foot-four black guy who's carrying her. And she's with him. And she's all hugging him and kissing him. And he's he and he's also in the military. And she's walking. And he's like, what? Uh-huh. And he sits there. And all of a sudden, he pulls out a gun. And he sticks the gun to the dog, boom, and shoots her dog. <laughs> and he sticks the gun to his head. <laughs> and I was, it's the funniest thing you've ever oh. seen in your life. 
that's soft. Don't judge me. Um, it, it, <laughs> he shoots the dog and then himself. Shoots, the, shoots her dog. Does she see it? Yeah, she's oh, there. Oh, okay. She's the, so she's they're, they're like, like yeah. screaming, and then he shoots himself, and then the, the so he did that commercial for a jewelry store. Oh fuck! So he, but then he had an alt, but he has an alternate, and that's just his own alt. He said because when we were talking about putting it together, he and his buddies were like, "Wouldn't it be funny?" She walks out with another guy, and he shoots her dog. Yeah, but she, how does that correlate with a jewelry company? No, he does that. He made a separate. Oh, a separate. So he one. did it okay. as a spoof. Yeah, he's like we're already here. Yeah, we have the like it <laughs> was it like it's easy to shoot right. her going, and she she turns to him and she runs and they hug and he no she hugs the dog yeah, and kisses yeah. the dog and then that's it. He said, "We ought to go ahead. We'll take a gun. Yeah, we'll, you know." So yeah. he did the separate one. He 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 goes to he, when he pitches it to them. Yeah, they have like twenty people in a boardroom. <laughs> Holy and fuck! And he shows that one. The Were one they with all the, the freaked murder. out? And he said, "I think they're gonna die laughing, realizing right. it's a joke." Oh no! He said, "Bro, crickets." I bet. And he said, "They look at him. They're like they were horrified." Um. Danny. Read the fucking room, yeah, man. Danny, we uh, we really don't. He's oh, and he said, I realized right away that they, they're not thinking. He's yeah. okay. That was just a joke. It was just a joke. Hold on, I, I got that. He said, and then I play the other one. They're like, oh, okay, that's uh, yeah, that's much better. Okay, okay. He said, oh. like, they have no sense of humor. No, at of all. course not. It was. Read the room. I will show Come you the video. On, yeah. You're gonna be like, <laughs> you just don't see it coming. Yeah. As I'm sure many of these people did, and I'll get back. Yeah. Sorry, I'll be serious again. No, it's okay. Sorry. Then it'll be muscle memory for me, and I'll just pick up a, a mop and a fucking bottle, and I'll just start cleaning it. And I'm like, Boom. whoa, whoa, wait. This Damn is it. commercial. Hold on. Yeah, this is a commercial. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, Have you seen Breaking Bad? Yeah. You love it? I've seen part. I've seen everyone I've seen oh, was good. So yes. you haven't seen it through and through? No, no. No. You mean that when that series was huge, I was locked up, and it's yeah. hard to watch. There's no program. excuse now. There's Netflix. There's just fucking no excuse, you know. I just got through Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, I couldn't do it. I'm working on, you know, we're working on. Uh, I think it's the language. R- really? Why? I, like, I don't want to have to pay attention that much to understand what the fuck kind of English are you speaking? What What did I watch? What did we watch the other day? Um, oh, you know what? The Did, did you ever see? Um, uh, not, not what's the name of it um you the series yes. you where yes he's a, he's a serial killer yes and he stalks these chicks and yeah yeah, yeah. that's a great that's a great one it too. is but you know there was like three seasons and then we're i think the new season's coming out in like a month or so uh-huh that's a great one he's constantly <laughs> cleaning stuff up yeah um so yeah yeah, he's the one who's got him locked in a cage, right? Yeah, because he's always trying to fight the urge to get rid of it, and he'll argue. He actually does let, like, he ends up letting one guy go, and that guy ends up being, like, a, a huge confidant of his who's, like, helping him. No it, shit, already, I missed that part. He was already, like, a criminal anyway. Oh, okay. And he had, so instead but, of turning, turning him in, he's like, hey, man, I like your yeah. style. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. You know what's so funny about I that? I want to kidnap chicks, too. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny about that? The whole time he's talking to this guy and he's locked up in the cage, he's like, you don't understand. I'm in love with this girl in Thailand, and I've sent her $30,000 to get oh, a surgery. And sake. he's sitting there going like, there's no girl in Thailand. Are you crazy? Yeah. But eventually he lets him go. There is a girl in Thailand. He goes to Thailand. He's living in Thailand, and he's remotely, like, helping him. Shut up. It's, just, it's a great All right, show. I missed that season. i got to watch that dark. shit. super dark. Yeah. Super dark show. Well, I mean. I would think that, you know, yeah. like, yeah. My life is dark, so it's yeah. okay. I yeah. like it. How often do you do this, um, the, the the cleanup? Like, is it pretty semi-consistent, or do you have weeks when you're doing nothing? No, suddenly, it's consistent. Boom. But, you know, we have other services, too, like Meth Lab Cleanup, that we'll do. We'll clean meth labs, you know, that don't involve. I love the way you say that. Just yeah, like, it's like, just kind of, done you know, everybody? like, hey, pass like, the broccoli. Like, meth, like, you know, we yeah. also wash cars. Yeah, oh. yeah. Cool. Only if there's blood in it. Right. So, so meth lab cleanup, Jeez. Yeah. So that's why I said if you if you'd seen Breaking Bad because out of everything that I've seen that is the most accurate in terms of why we clean it, the PPE that he's wearing, the whole bit. Like the the storyline is brutally accurate. Right. Every every meth guy I knew in prison yeah. had a burn mark on him. Oh, I'm sure. All of them have. Did they all have fucked up teeth? Uh well, not all of them. most of them. Yeah. That was at the level like when the medium you know, the guys i met that did meth in the low security prison like probably i i as silly as this is at the age of 53 you know my best friend which is a guy named perry uh, rossini <laughs> who when you were mentioning rolled the got rolled the, yeah. her up like a tortilla. tortilla that's 
He's, That's what he did. He's disposed of two bodies. There you and, go. And, and he said, he said, you know, we we put them in a sleeping bag, you know, roll like a tortilla. Yeah. And we, you know, dump the bodies in, you know, these uh, um, uh, dumpsters. Um, Why do people use dumpsters? I don't know. When you have he, perfectly good alligators. Oh, I, I, I told seriously. You, I, said, I was like, I was like, I like, mean, seriously. Dig a hole, bury the body, Why? or burn it, or do some get rid. Of, like, don't throw it in a dumpster. Thinking one of them don't was. Don't make yourself sweat. Give it to the alligators. Let them do it. Well, there's no alligator. He was in L.A. Well, there, are there alligators in L.A.? No. No? Okay. No. Um, but anyway, he... Uh, uh, but, like, this is prime spot right here. But he was in... He he, he ran meth labs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, they weren't, like, double wides in the bathtub. He, he right. ran them, like, they rented penthouses. Yeah. This was a high-end... This was when yep. crystal meth... Like, so he they were making... Um, they were making ice. Yeah. And he was he's a chemist mm-hmm. and was taught by a, a chemist. Right. But he does have... He does have a burn mark. I've also met the guys who have... Half their face melted off. Oh, I'm you know, sure. Those, you put mix the of, fucking lithium in the wrong order, and yeah. that shit's gonna wear on yeah. you. But like he made meth and never did meth. He's like, I've never done it. That's like, the way to go. That's like it. Walter White. Right. He made right. it, but didn't do it. Yeah. The fatal errors when they do their own product. Yeah. Because yeah. then they get sloppy. Right. He, uh, yeah, he was super and super successful at it too. Like hired F, had FBI agents that were on his payroll. This was back in the nice. Back in the uh, 80s, like they're, they're tipping him off. They actually, he's been arrested multiple times and they literally. Did they find the bodies that he buried? Uh, well, they, they found one body in a dumpster. Okay. One body was also thrown in a dumpster and it just, they never found it. Obviously, it was thrown in a landfill somewhere. Um, so but, he never got charged with that? No, no, he was charged with both oh, of them. Oh, he did. He was okay. charged with both of them. Uh, you know, and they were both uh, FBI informants. So they were, so that's why they accounted, equated the murders to him. Of course, it's such a, it's such a, I actually wrote a whole book on it. It's called Devil Exposed. Oh, um, okay. But it, it's such a horrible case where he was convinced to testify or cooperate in exchange for a reduced sentence. Yeah. That, um, and accept a plea because everybody else in the case was, even though they had all taken like polygraphs and yeah. failed them right, multiple right. times, they were all going to say he was the one that, first they all said, he killed the guys. Then uh, it, once they failed the polygraphs, they said, okay, he didn't kill them, but um, he told us to kill them. Yeah. And, you know, they failed them again. Then they said, okay, okay, well, it, what happened was. Oh, and so then they stopped giving, when they finally got the story they wanted, they stopped giving them the polygraphs. And now you've got seven guys. we got like three guys ready to say you did it. Yeah. Seven other people ready to testify. Right. So he's like, I have no choice but to plead guilty. And tell what really happened, mm-hmm. which was that these guys decided to kill him. I was there. I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, and he said, and I disposed of the bodies, which was funny because I can't tell you, this is going to be horrible. It was like walking in prison. Yeah. And like, I forget, like I, he, I owed him like some sodas or something. I'm supposed to buy them on commissary. And they didn't have soda for like three weeks. And I went to mm-hmm. commissary and I'm like, hey, by the way, I don't have the sodas. You know, I'm like, they, they didn't have them again. And yeah. he goes. My God, he's. I feel like one of your victims, like that. And I go, hey, bro, my victims are alive. He's like, you know damn well, all I did was move the bodies. And I it was like, and I remember stopping, thinking, man, this isn't a normal conversation. No, no, like, this isn't not at all. This is not your typical guy conversation. But it, is it true what they say is that you know you go into prison with a high school diploma and you come out with a PhD? You've heard me say that. No, I haven't. I have I not said that. Well, exact... listen, Zach. I was in law enforcement, so oh, that's was... the kind of the common thing. So it is true. Oh, absolutely. So do you believe that there? There's a perfect crime where you can't get caught. My so my I mean I believe there is as far as let's say let's say um, fraud. Yeah, there, white there, collar. Yeah, white collar. There definitely is. My only problem with saying that is it's like with me, like I didn't get caught. It's the fly in the ointment mm-hmm. that throws everything off. And I'll give you an example. I always use this example: is I had a girl one time who we rented a house transfer the deed into somebody else into another name a stolen identity we have a a perf we have an I- perfect id we have everything's perfect mm-hmm. refinance the house twice mm-hmm. we've got about half a million dollars coming to us she goes into a title company to get the check signs everything the picture on the id is her yeah the woman at the title company has her sign everything looks at the id and says this doesn't look like you and it is her it's her yeah and she goes, it's me. She said, I, I had darker hair in the picture, but it's me. Looks at it. Another woman comes in and says, I think it's her. It's her. And she goes, I don't think so. And she says, listen, you've signed 
I'm not going to give you the check. She said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some phone calls. If everything checks out, I'll mail you the check or you can come back and get it. I'm sorry. I just feel like something's not right. Now, there's nothing that wasn't right. It was the right. only thing. The police said the only thing was that the picture didn't match. I said, but the picture did match. And they yeah. go, oh, we know. Yeah. It's just weird that she felt that yeah. way. And even she said, I just didn't look like her. Like, how do I account for me doing no everything shit. Else perfectly? Right. Yeah. You fucked up. Right. And stumbled onto my crime. Damn. Like, that's what happened. She yeah. starts making phone calls. And eventually she finds out that the per- the warranty deed, the person that we bought the house right. from, didn't sell the house. He's like, I didn't. <laughs> sell the house what are you talking about you're borrowing money on my house you know and yeah and, no it's in my name no, no no here's the warranty deed he's like that's my tenant oh that switched that so it unraveled had she not made that mistake it would have been the crime would have been fine like i was Shit. running a, a crime that was i was running a crime where i was making synthetic identities yeah and i'm um, buying houses for 50 grand recording the sale price at 200 so mm-hmm. now the houses appear to be 200 Buying them all in one area. Right. And then I'm borrowing money at the $200,000. So now I've got appraisals that say the house is worth two hundred. dollars The comparable sales are two hundred. dollars Right. I'm borrowing $180,000 on a house I bought for forty or fifty. dollars Right. Pulling out over a hundred grand per house. So each person bought five or six houses. So each person's borrowing a million dollars. There's a right. profit of six or seven hundred thousand. Right. And then we'd make a few payments and let them all go into foreclosure. And the banks are foreclosing on the houses, not realizing that they just lost. They realize, of course, when they resell them, we made a mistake. Like we we lent too much money on a house that right. wasn't worth it. Right. But the comparable sales were there. Exactly. And this happens legitimately yeah. in the real a real world scenario. Yeah. It does and happen. And because you bought in the same neighborhood, they you prove. elevated the exactly. yeah, prices. Right. Right. So the reason that whole thing imploded was because – that person didn't recognize Damn. the thing, and that sparked an investigation that got to somebody else arrested, and that person cooperated, and they started a task force, Shit. and they said, this is what he's been doing for almost two years now. He's borrowed over $11 million, yeah. and then they come to arrest me. Fuck. So the whole thing fell over. So is that the perfect crime? To me, it was the perfect yeah, crime because right. I'm stealing from you. I'm telling you there's a loss, and you're saying it's perfectly legal. We'll just take the hit and move yep. on. And I was spreading it out. It was working. So is it yes, but the problem is is that – like to me, committing fraud is something that I could very easily pull off. What I can't account for is the fly in the ointment. Yeah. And I can't at my age, I don't have another run in me. Right, right. I can't yeah. go back to jail. Yeah. I can't five years. I'll be lucky if I can put myself if I can get myself together enough to retire at sixty five or seventy. Right, right. Like think about it. Start your life over at fifty three years old. Yeah. No, I mean when 50. you when you talk about that, but the drug game that's a short lifespan, man. Oh, these guys are, and they're, they're, they're insane all to take that other. risk. Right. Yeah. For and nothing. They're, they're cutting each other. But by the time that that, you know, 100% pure ice hits my level, right. it's been cut so many times with fucking baking soda and sugar and everything else that it's so diluted, it's like 20% of product. What, what is the fentanyl? Fentanyl now. now what, yeah. What's going in it. So, you know, what's, what's interesting about that <clears throat> is, you know, everybody's like, like, like you were saying, it's all different levels, yeah. right? I know a guy who owns several title companies in this area. He's hired me several times to do promotions for him. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that he had a drug habit. Oh. And he died from fentanyl about a year ago. Shit. Didn't even know it till like six months ago. I called up just to catch up with yeah him. but is he one of those guys that was using fentanyl or using other no, stuff he, that was cut with fentanyl apparently he had like a, a heroin had it have it he would get clean for a few years right but super successful did this he guy's... was he aware though that the fentanyl was in the heroin i don't think so see that's happening a lot right right no that that from what i understand is the guy i talked to i ended up talking to an ex a friend of his uh, they were friends yeah former friends you know before he died so they were friends. I ended up talking to him because he's the one who contact who told me right. after I had tried to contact uh, the one guy. His name is Kevin. I reached out to him. Hey, what's going on? Right, he's right. Like, he calls me. He's like, Hey, man, I'm, and I'm. He, he's like, I'm fucked up over Kevin. Like, I'm, I'm. I'm sure you've you've heard. I'm like, heard what? He's not returning my text. Like that's why I reached out to you. He's yeah. Like, oh wow. He's like, yeah. He would get clean for four or five years. Ooh. He, you know, he said then he he. You know, he'd go on a bender or whatever for, you know, three or four yeah. months. His sister would call me. I'd fly down. We'd get him in a rehab. He was just been going on for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. He was a super successful guy. Right. And he said, yeah, he said he's uh, he started 
doing heroin, and apparently he got something that was laced with with fentanyl. I don't I don't understand why they're lacing it unknowingly. I I don't. What's the benefit? I mean, if you're killing the guy, so there goes your sale, future sales. Right. I it doesn't make sense to me. But we we just cleaned up one, two Irish guys, literally relocated to Tampa from Ireland, didn't even have their fucking furniture yet, right? So these two guys, you know, big guys doing steroids, the whole bit, ED pills all over their fucking apartment. They don't have anything in their apartment yet. And they're like, hey, first day in Tampa, let's go party. They get some Coke, not knowing that the Coke was laced with fentanyl. They fucking snort it, both of them. Bam, died right there. No one found them for two weeks because uh-huh. their family's in fucking Ireland. Yeah, they just right? figured, yeah. So apartment comes knocking because it stinks. They find the fentanyl, coke there, and then they decompose on the floor. So it's like, I, I just don't get it why you're putting fentanyl unknowingly and giving it to people when... There's plenty of people that would probably buy it as is. I mean, I'm assuming that maybe it simulates the same kind of a high, and they're, and these guys are putting too much in it. Like, I'm sure people could do it. It's laced with fentanyl, and they don't die. It's so minuscule what it takes to kill you, though. Really? Okay. It's a granule, like, of sand. We could put a granule right here of sand. And it, it'll kill you. It'll fucking kill you. Yeah, I don't... I don't... I, don't, I just don't get it, um... Those those guys bought coke. They didn't know that you know right. that it had fentanyl in there. It like, just doesn't make any fucking yeah. sense to me. Listen, but people aren't, drug yeah. dealers aren't aren't you know they're not rocket scientists. No, you know? by they're, any means, and uh, it, it's a risky risky business. In my opinion, there's too much uh, risk, way more risk than the reward. I forget. I read a book about uh, a former. It was a, a, a retired like drug enforcement uh, yeah. agent, and. There was a, a filthy rich like pastor that ran one of these mega churches, <laughs> and his son yeah. had been caught smoking pot. And he brings in the DE agent who works for him as security and says, "You know what's going on? Like I give money to drugs, all these drug things, yeah. and all." He's like, "I mean, this isn't. It's not even. It's not making a dent." He's yeah. like, "What would make a dent?" Yeah. And the guy says, "Well, in the DEA, we used to shoot the shit. We used to say, you know, well, you know what." Like, if you poisoned a good portion of the drug drugs that are out there, people would go into rehabs. You'd, you'd kill a lot of people, hardcore dealers. You'd it's kill actually them. not a bad idea. Right. Well, he ends up going to, like, Columbia or something. He gets some um, a mushroom yeah. that, that shuts your liver down, uh-huh. but you have to take it over a long period of time. He's like, that way, you can't just poison... The drugs, because very quick, quickly it'll kill 12 people, right. and they'll realize this is what it is, and it'll stop. You have to do something that you can get out there in the whole community where hardcore drug users will be hit over time, and then people won't <laughs> know whether they ha- they're they using it or not, and eventually it'll hit the news. It'll still be out there. People won't know, and they'll clean up because they'll be scared because Jimmy died and uh-huh. Tommy died and so-and-so's in the hospital, and I need to get clean because I've been taking some of the same, same stuff. So they do this. The whole book is designed— it's, a, it's an so amazing— So maybe this has been done by the U.S. government because they're the ones that are benefiting from it, right? But these guys are dying right away. Yeah. Like, And then there's scare out there, like you were saying. That's a really good yeah. point. But, I mean, let's, it's, you know, does the government even want to shut down you know, drugs? Like, why wouldn't you? Like, just like you said, why yeah. wouldn't you just regulate yeah. it? Charge, Tax regulate it. Tax the shit it. out of it, right. yeah. Like, they regulated marijuana. I don't yep. see people jumping off buildings. Like, no. I don't see this as being a horrible thing. No, no. This isn't changed. I think it's just put a ton of money back into yeah. the, into the government. So, you know that it works. Yeah. I mean, other countries are doing it. They're re- they're regulating the prostitution too. You yeah. know, Amsterdam yeah. and even here. You know, one county. So I don't get it. it doesn't make much sense. Yeah, I was in the middle of uh, when I went to Amsterdam uh, last year. I was it was the middle of uh, of, of COVID. Like everything oh. across the board was was shut down. But yeah, didn't look like a horrible place. No. Look, reminded me of Venice. Yeah. It was very nice, very cool. I yeah. mean, everybody seemed nice. I didn't see a, a real issue. Yeah. So. I bet they have low violence. <laughs> they they do have low violence. <laughs> Considering the. They, uh, they have low violence. They have low crime. Yeah. They have low across. Of course, everybody's relaxed. Everybody's happy. Relaxed. Yeah. yeah. I don't have to break into three people's houses to get enough money to buy my crack. Exactly. I just, I just, go I just, I just get some weed. Yeah. Fine. I agree. Um. 
think you're onto something. Uh, yeah, I'm the first person to say that. Yeah, this is a dead, this, uh, that horse has been beaten. Yeah, yeah. So, anything, any other things that you can think of? That you know, there's uh, the the stories of what people do to one another. You know, we had this uh, this chick once. Her dad put a pillow over his head and shot himself in the head to just mask the sound. You know, and we're in there, and we get there, and she calls us to for the cleanup, and she insists on sitting in there and watching. And I'm like, oh, that's fucking weird. You know, and I'm thinking, well, maybe it's closure for her. Right. Like she needs to see it and stuff. So she sits there, doesn't say a word, just like kind of a creepy, sits there in the corner, watches uh, watches us clean it up. And then, you know, I'm pulling the bedding back and stuff. And I find part of um, his jaw with a tooth in oh. it. And uh, she sees me grab it and I'm getting ready to throw it in the red bag. And she goes, no, 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 no. I want it. I'm like, wait, What's going you, on? you want that? Nobody's asked me for that. So I was like, fuck, what do I do? And I'm like, uh, okay. And I give it to her and uh, she grabs it and she walks off. And the next day we get back to the job, you know, it was a decent sized job. Come back the next day and she's fucking wearing it around her neck on a necklace. That's how you keep daddy with well, you, I folks. Mean, Jesus, wow, that's... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people are very, very strange. People are fucking weird. Yep, weird, weird. Uh, that was the first time and last time that that's happened, that somebody wanted to wear it. But, you know, you got, like, Angelina Jolie. When's she wearing, like, a oh, vial, vial of blood? Of blood from uh, Billy Bob yeah, Thornton. Yeah, Billy Bob Thornton. And they uh, both wore. Yeah. So maybe that's a thing. <laughs> I don't know. But a jaw and teeth that's going to literally decompose. Oh, my God. On your hey babe, what's that new perfume? What I don't so it wasn't so, we're not, <laughs> so there's like still stuff attached to it. Yeah, it was a piece of the jaw with the tooth. It would look like a an incisor. Yeah, and she had it on a on a rope like a chain, and she was proud of it. How old look. is this chick? Twenty seven, twenty eight. Wow. Yeah, she's, she's younger. Whew. Yeah, she lived in the house. No. So, Oh, she didn't live in the house, but he put a. But she was there when he. Well, she's the next to Ken. No, no, I'm saying she was there when he tried to kill himself. No. Okay. No, so I'm wondering she was why there when used... I tried to clean it. I guess he wanted to mask the the sound or whatever by putting a pillow there. But um. Yeah, she was eccentric to yeah. say the least. Yeah, that's a polite way to say. Yeah. It. Um. Man, so how how often are you doing this? Every day. Every day, every day, there's there's something. Um, Is it just you? Oh you have no! Employed, multiple yeah, employees yeah. By this point, it's right? grown. You know, we've got about forty eight locations across the country now. Oh, oh, yeah. I didn't realize it. Yeah, because was... I franchised it back in twenty sixteen. Okay. So, um, Tampa is like our corporate headquarters. So right. it's, it's the one of the largest offices, of course. Right. Um, you know, we've got media team and marketing team and financial team. You know, there's there, it's definitely grown from yeah, where yeah. it was. You know, I started out so being by myself. Yeah, yeah, okay. and now we have like 21 employees in corporate, and there's about 95 employees among the other locations. So, when did you open the? Uh, <clears throat> or when did you start your YouTube channel? 2019. Okay. And uh, that was. A risk. Right. What's the name of it? Sorry. Uh, crime scene cleaning. Crime scene cleaning. Yeah. And it was a risk to start it out. And a, Why do you say that? Well, basically, you know, long story short, I was getting contacted back in 2012, 14 from all these reality TV show companies right. in LA. Yeah. Hey, we love this business. We want to make a show out of it. This, You know, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. okay. And, oh, we'll follow you around. We'll make a sizzle. Yada, yada, yada. And, uh, they all kind of came back and said, everybody loves the concept, but they think it's going to be very difficult for sponsors because they're not going to want to advertise on something that grotesque. Right. So my response was, why the fuck are you pitching it on cable? Yeah. Like, this is not a lifetime movie. Yeah, yeah. This is Netflix, HBO, you know, Prime. So I finally, in 2019, I said, fuck it. We're going to do it ourselves. Uh, you know, YouTube was starting to, you know, you know, get some traction and a lot of people were doing well on there. And my entire staff was like, that's a bad idea. And I'm like, why? 
that shit's going to come off callous. It's going to be insensitive. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. We're literally going to have a videographer follow our crews around just a day in the life. Yeah. We're going to make it educational. What we do, why we do it. And yeah, I don't have to be in the middle of the crime scene making jokes no, and cracking jokes. No. Like, no, no, this is how the process, right. this is what happens. Like, I can. So I said, I think it's a chance we take. Yeah. So we did it. And within the first two months, we had 100,000 subscribers. I'm like, fuck. Right. Yeah. Should have done this five I years ago. I should have done this five years ago. Exactly. And not listen to you, Fox. So we did it. And, you know, now we're almost at a million right subs we're at four and a half million on tiktok people love to see this shit they love the gore right they love i mean as gross as it sounds they want to see what it looks like when you blow your fucking brains out right and i'm pulling your eyeball out of the drywall so what's happening with the uh, <laughs> what's happening with um uh with advertisers like i mean it the, the videos are you're monetized so people we're monetized. Are, uh, are advertising oh yeah they are advertising and you know it, i find it um hypocritical kind of what how youtube formulates their algorithm because obviously our content does not meet their guidelines no. but they're like hey those motherfuckers are, have have viewers yeah so instead of giving them the normal split which you know i don't know 70 30 us 70 them 30 they just fucking reversed it they take right. the 70 we get the 30 and they call it limited ads yeah yeah you know so but we're, they're still advertising oh they're fuck still, yeah. yeah there's tons of advertisers we're doing sponsorships for people uh that don't necessarily need to be aligned with cleaning or restoration you know we've no. done headphones for christ's sake um you name it we're still hoover gave us a sponsorship to with their vacuums and stuff right but i mean the ad sense the thing about the ad sense is that 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 YouTube's that the ad, the advertisers that are that are connected with AdSense mm -hmm. they don't know where their videos are showing up. If you meet their demographic, it's different than you you getting a sponsorship. That's if they know it's on your show. True. I'm saying the AdSense. True. The, if it's AdSense, like it could be like they're all they're saying is look. No, they're looking to, for demographics. Right. We're looking for demographics. Right. If she meets this demographic, exactly. They're putting we don't on there. Care right. What, what and it our is. demographic is ironically 75 percent female. Really? Yeah, Listen, between the age of 35 and 55. And that that's the t – remember we were, we were talking about, like, that's the thing is that, like, true crime is, like – Almost 80, female. It's like, it's, like, 80 percent female. Yes, correct. But it's 80 percent female when it's connected to murders, serial, mm -hmm. to serial killer murders, right. you know, blood and gore. Right. But – if you have things like fraud and con men and scams, they don't care. they're not interested. <laughs> yeah. That's why mine is Yours like is male. Yeah. It's like 95, 96% um, male. Right. Women are interested in the story too. So what I had to do was not only say, we're going to clean this up and this is how we do it. We need to give them the story. Right. What happened to this guy? What kind of life did he live? Why did he do what he do? That's what women want. They want to know the story behind it. Men are more like, show me the fucking brains. Okay. Right? Which, is anyone yeah, yeah. really surprised by that? Yeah. No. Look at, like, you know, horror movies. That's probably majority male because there's really not a theme there. All right. Okay. You know? But if you look at, like, a Lifetime channel, that's yeah, yeah. Re real. That's all female. Yeah. It's more about the, the story the than story. it is the ultimate That's what women want. Or whatever. And that's why these true crime channels, they're doing so well because women are tuning in and paying attention. Yeah. Man, almost a million subscribers. Yeah. And, and since 2019. Yeah. So, man. We should have been at a I'm million dragging, last bro. year. And I'm, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're not at all. <laughs> it's like always yelling at him. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's, it's Connor's fault. It's it Connor is. and it Colby's is. fault. It is. You know, I you should like, probably I fire here. them immediately. Yeah. He's like, I just got here. <laughs> like, I've been here like a year. Have you, it's been a year? Almost a year. Almost a year. How'd you find him? Um, it, he's, uh, same, uh, Colby, he contacted Colby and said, Hey, I want to get into Colby? this. Colby, Tyler found Colby. Oh, okay. I just one day said to, to Tyler, look, I want to interview people, but I want to do like three cameras like yeah. Danny does. Right, and, right. You know, I want to do that. Like, that's like the, the thing. And I was like, but I can't work the cameras. I can't do the cameras and the switcher right. and this and that. And I can buy the equipment. And right. He said, I'll find somebody for you. Yeah. And like two weeks later, he said, okay, I, like, can you meet this guy for breakfast at this time? And yeah. Sure Bam. Enough. Yeah. Oh, and Colby, uh, like Colby quit his job. Jesus. Colby was making like a hundred thousand dollars a year as a um 
working in a in a, a warehouse as a coordinator in like a warehouse like, no like way. um you know the truck doing yeah. the trucks and everything and but he's just he's he got to a point after so many years he's got a, a, a daughter he's a daughter he's a daughter he's married has a daughter young guy and he's just like i got to that point where i was like he went to his wife and said look i i don't want to do this the rest of my life yeah like it's good money, but I, I'm at the point now where they're starting to kind of like elevate me, and I'm mm-hmm. going to get stuck mm-hmm. making so much money that I can't back out of it. Golden this, handcuffs. Yeah, and he said so. He said I I, I want to. This is what I want to do. I want to do YouTube, and she was like, okay, well, can we can we survive on, yeah. on that? And he said, well, let me look into it. So he as soon as he kind of looked in, started looking into it. He had a buddy that was going to hire him to run his channel. He does has a sporting goods store. Yeah. He's going to. I'll you. We start something with the sporting goods. And then at the same time, Tyler came in and said, hey, here's my buddy. You know, you got to talk to Matt. So so now I think he's making – he said he's making way more than he was making before. After – was it like six months to a year? He's making more money now than he was making at the other job no, sure. doing what he likes to do. Yeah. So – Good for him. Yeah, so good for exactly. I I love stories where that's people, the perfect scenario. It is when not only you're doing better than you were financially, but you're doing what you love. Yeah, I you know I look, like just doing the YouTube and everything in general. Like I said, when I was in prison, I was I was ho- I was perfectly happy living in someone's spare room, just being able to do things that make me happy. Yeah. Instead of spending the rest of my life chasing money. Yeah. Doing something that sucks that I don't really that's a, that's a struggle to get out of bed to do. Right. And, you know, the thing that I really like doing, you know, is bank fraud. Yeah. But the judge was very <laughs> serious. The judge made it clear. You can't even work for you, a title company or anything. You can't do that again. Yeah. And so, yeah. Can you even work in the financial oh, no, sector? I can't work, no. I can't work in finance. I can't work in real estate. I can't Ooh. work in construction or development. Damn. Um, but, you know, so now the, what, what I love doing is just – talking about like when they somebody yeah. hires me to do a speaking engagement yeah. and the you know one you get to fly across the country yeah. you know that's always fun yeah so you fly somewhere and then you go and you give an hour-long talk and of course there's usually like a a dinner after yeah. or something beforehand so sure. it's a few hours you get to talk about all the things yeah. that i've done and especially if i talk to people in the industry yeah. then they have stories and we can have the stories and, right um and i don't have to there's no chance i'm going to jail for that which is a, a plus. Uh, and then I get to write true crime stories and I get to interview people like yeah, you, yeah. which is, you know, super interesting because, you know, if you wanted to interview Jordan Peterson, mm-hmm. for example, that might be interesting. But the truth is there's 5,000 videos on him already. Yeah. But there's not 5,000 videos on someone in your your uh, line of work. Right, right. There's not somebody that – like that to me is unique. Even mm-hmm. in prison, mm-hmm. when I was writing guys' stories – like a lot of these guys have trash. Like you talk to some drug oh, dealer who's in there, and you talk to some guy who's like, "I was raised in the project. My mom was a prostitute. Exactly. My dad was in prison. Uh, I, I started selling drugs. I this. Of course, but and the problem with that story is, it's a good story. He's got he's got snitches and mm-hmm. bad cops and and double crosses, and he's got a great story, but it's not unique. Mm-hmm. There's I can sit there and listen to. There's a thousand other guys on this compound with that story. So what I would focus on is what can I he, what can I who can I talk to that has a different story? Mm-hmm. It's still a crime, crime story. So it's it's Ephraim Devaroli. It's the gun runner. Yeah, it's yeah. you know it's a guy who's maybe he's the meth lab who's yeah, but he's doing in penthouses right. in Beverly exactly. Hills. I find that fascinating. Right, all of their different histories, what got them to where they did that, where they went. I just I find it fascinating. Yeah, that's me too. Like I love talking to those guys. Yeah, it's not that the, the the crack dealer doesn't have a great story, but it's not unique enough right. for me to. They're dime I've a dozen. heard it a thousand times. Yeah, the the difference I think is when the empathy that I actually had for these drug dealers, these street level drug dealers. It's like when you give them no education, no path to do anything else. Yep. They don't know any different. What did you think was going to happen? Of course, I would do the same thing. Right. The, uh, yeah, this is what's available to me. Everybody I know is doing it. Everybody I know is in drugs. It doesn't have a horrible stigma in my neighborhood right. or my family. Right. And if I go to prison, people will sit, put money on my books and they'll come visit me. And this is yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's a cycle, and you, I think they're focusing on the wrong problem. Let's go after drugs. Drugs. No, it's it's way before that. Like why are it's a supply and demand issue, right? Just like any business. Right. So why aren't we focused on what's causing the demand to begin with? Right. Yeah. 
I think that's that's the the problem and you know the stigma is wow if you're a young black male and you're poor your choice is to work at the 7-Eleven or deal drugs and actually be able to feed your family right yeah who wouldn't choose that I mean come on well you and I aren't going to fix the problem right this second so we should though we (laughs) we'll work on it later (laughs) um all right so um so you've got the YouTube channel yep you've got I had no idea you were you had franchised this thing and you were all over the your, your Yeah. What do you do for the franchise? What do you do? You, do you train the people? Do you yeah. provide them with all the train them, provide the marketing, um, the call center, the you know, just the infrastructure is set as in sense. Because what what you're doing is people are buying business in a box. They don't want to go through the shit that I went through starting right. out, you know, um, printing your own fucking business cards with perforations on the bottom. So they want, they want a business in a box and we're giving it to them. We're saying here, there's, here's the system and the process, follow it. You will be successful just like we are. Right. And that's essentially the secret sauce to every franchise in the world. So you're McDonaldizing it. You're, and and so do they, do they pay a franchise fee or they buy a territory? Okay. Um, you know, of 500,000 people. So you say you got a city like, you know, L.A., that's a big city. You probably right. got 10 franchisees that could be in that particular area. And then they pay us a royalty on every, um, a percentage on every job that they do. Um, so do you, do all of them do the same thing? Do they all do like the meth lab cleanup? Yep. They all do all, they all do they the same? They have to do all of the services that we provide. Okay. And to do the, like, do, you, do they have to go get certified themselves? We or train them. Okay, so you have a training, like a training school? Yeah, we have a training oh, okay. school right there in Tampa, Ybor. Oh, okay. We Did actually have simulated crime scenes, too. Oh, okay. So we created like a 10 by 10 room with drywall. We put carpet sometimes. We put uh, LVP, you know, the plank flooring sometimes. And we use pig's blood. And we just simulate a normal crime scene, and that's how we teach them how to clean this stuff. Okay. Um do you do you record? Do you have like a thing on your YouTube channel? Do you yeah. ever you kind of go through the whole Hell process yeah. and everything? We record the whole thing. You know, we really want to see what their reaction is to being in that environment. Do people not do well? I mean, you know, most people do very very well. We've had one guy that puked. Right. That he was just like, man. But you know, you're supposed to wear a respirator. That's that's the whole point. So you don't right. smell the stuff. Yeah. Huh. I was just thinking. Um, but it looks freaking realistic. Right. You know, we've got couches and beds and living rooms and sometimes we do vehicles we'll get vehicles donated to us and i'll go get this gallon of pig's blood and i'll sit it in the sun and i'll let it start coagulating (laughs) these guys are like yeah and it looks like a human fucking liver when it's coming out you know and uh i'll let the flies get in there and lay their eggs and the maggots and you know we let it but you get desensitized to this, right? Like at some well, point, like clearly. if you walk into a, yeah, if you walk into, yeah. a, you don't, you're just like, eh. I can eat a point, hamburger right? right in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh my yeah. God. That needs to be the clip. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There can be rotting corpses yeah. and blood and, and guts and everything, and I'm and sitting there eating. Yeah. A, I can eat a burger. Pass me the five guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Oh my yeah. God, that's horrible. You know what? What's funny is, um, it was uh, I, there was I read like an article about um, uh psychopaths Mm -hmm. and what what businesses (laughs) psychopaths go into like what has the the largest percentage of psychopaths like it was ceos was like one of the largest yeah ceos well they also fall in like you know so antisocial behavior in general follow but but yeah but narcissists so so sociopaths and narcissism a lot of times goes hand in hand Mm -hmm. so you have it was CEOs, and then the next one was like surgeons, like doctors and surgeons. Oh, because yeah. to be the a narcissism. surgeon, oh yeah. But to be a surgeon, and it's cut godlike. into somebody mm-hmm. to cut into somebody. like to me. If you said, Matt, I'm I'm paying you to cut into me. Here's your scalpel. I would have a hard time physically cutting into somebody. It just would freak me out. Um, but and I'm pretty much a sociopath anyway. But I'd have a hard time. So in general like that it's funny so i'm wondering like people that say hey i'm going to go into this business you know they must i wonder if they're going into it because they're like it won't affect me or they're saying no i can easily handle this are some people just easily handling it no big deal yeah but i think it's it's uh everyone has a morbid curiosity 
So we get it's like people slow down at car accidents. Right? Yeah, like they're, they're like, rubbernecking it, looking yeah. at you that know. That always kills me. I'm like, hey, Let's go. what, what are happened? You doing? They're like almost stopping. Yeah, yeah the cops like we want to see an arm. Yeah. We want to see you know a decapitation or Remove something. Move the blanket, please. Yeah. But I think you know we get a lot of messages from followers and fans on the on social media that are, how do I get a job with you guys? This looks amazing. Like who does that? Right. You know, like I look at a, a lobster commercial. I'm like, now that looks amazing, but I don't want to fucking work there. Right. But these people are like, hey, I'm enamored with death. Yeah. And destruction, and I want to work there. And I'm like, hey. You're hired. Yeah, you, you need to start a franchise. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Or, you know, work with us. But a lot of people, it's it's not, it may look glamorous. I can't imagine how it would look glamorous. But in reality, it's fucking hard work. You're wearing a Tyvek suit, a respirator, which is like breathing through a straw. It's 110 fucking degrees in Florida. Right. You're sweating your tits off. And it's not... It's not glamorous by any means. You're you're miserable while you're doing it. And once they get into the reality of it, they're like, oh, yeah. It's a lot of work. I'd rather, you know, go and eat a Big Mac than, right. than sit here and, and sweat my tits off. Yeah. Well, I think that's most things. You, you, the glamour. Like, you, you, yeah. you see the best part of it and you realize, oh, wait a second, this is a lot of work. Yeah, but I think it's, it's all mindset. So what I do is I look at it as a mess. For me, it is no different than if somebody just took a quart of motor oil and poured it in your living room. I would treat it exactly the same as I treat blood. It's just a mess to me. Because remember, the human is not there. Yeah. They're gone. Yeah. I mean, maybe some parts are left. But for the most part, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you look like. I don't know anything about you. I don't know your name. Sometimes I don't even know your fucking gender. Right. You know, uh, they won't even tell me. They'll just be like, hey, you know, clean up on aisle nine. Right. Okay, we're, we're in there cleaning it up. I don't ask questions. When you're done, you probably have a feeling of um, of satisfaction, right? Huge, like, like, huge. Because yeah. I'm a big kind of before and after person, and this is kind of why I love flipping houses and remodeling, and and because I want to see a transition. And the best satisfaction to me is for to somebody to come in and go, "Where did it happen?" Yeah, that's that's it, it's, perfect for me. So it's funny because like when I was on the run, mm-hmm. like I have plenty of money. I was still flipping houses. I would still buy a house, clean it up, fix it up, you know, do the whole thing. It's like, well, why are you doing that? It's like, well, I have to do something. Like, yeah, Mm -hmm. but of all the things you could do, Mm -hmm. why would you do that? I'm like, I I like it. Like, I would go in. I can pay someone to hire to lay the wood floors. I like laying the wood floors. Right. I could pay someone to put in the French doors, but I like that. Yeah. Like, so there were certain things I'm like, no, no, I'm going to do the tile work. And they're like, "Um, okay. uh, Yeah are you sure? Like, have you ever done it before? I'm like, yeah, I, yeah. I like, I enjoy doing it. So mm-hmm. I would do those things. Um, and I was talking to Danny one time, he was talking about painting. Like, do you like mm-hmm. painting? I was like, yeah, I was like, and he's like, so you like it. So you like the, like, what, what do you like about it? I'm like, I like it when it's done. Yeah. Like the actual going through the process of it. I, I, I enjoy that, the process. Do you find like, it therapeutic? I do. Calming to you? Very calming. Yeah. Like time yeah. goes by. Like, same. I feel the same mm-hmm. way about writing. Yeah. Like I'll start writing. I wake up at four in the morning or something. I'm down here and this yeah. and that. And I feel like I haven't done anything. And all of a sudden, I've written a couple paragraphs. And I'll look, turn around. Jess is making coffee, and I'm like, I'm like, what are you doing up so early? And she's like, it's it's five forty five. Like yeah. you've been up for almost two hours. We wow. gotta go to the gym soon. I'm like, yeah. I feel like I've been here ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same thing with painting. Like three hours will go by like that. People yeah. say, how long did it take you to do that? And I'm always like. I'm not, you know, I can't really even tell you because the time passes so quickly for right, me. Right, right. But I was explaining that to Danny from Concrete. Uh-huh. And I and he said, I go, do you, don't you have anything like that? And he goes, he goes, not really. And I went, wait a minute. I go, do you mow your own yard? He goes, yeah. And I go, when you're done mowing your yard and it's done and the mower's off and it's put up and you walk out, I go, and you look at the yard, do you have a feeling of satisfaction? He goes, I love that yeah. feeling. And I said, I feel that all exactly. the time. Exactly. Exactly. All the time. Yeah. And he was like, he goes, you know what I do? And I go, what? He said, I actually watch TikToks of people mowing yards. And I go, no, you don't. He goes, absolutely. Yeah. So we'll probably once a week, he'll send me a TikTok of some guy that's completely finished the yard, uh-huh. a yard. <laughs> it's like a, it like a time lapse. It's so satisfying. And he does. He like, he's, like, he's like, I love this. Yeah. I love, look at, look how, look at yeah. all the lines. Yep. Look what he did with the lines. Even ironing. Everyone hates ironing. I love it. Yeah. But when you're done, yeah, it's great. Like, it's, it's like oh, that. It's awesome. I did yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. I get that. Yeah. I get that. I don't think most. I think if you work in the um, if you work in the warehouse in Walmart or you're a cashier, I don't think you ever get that satisfaction. No. And maybe they don't need that satisfaction. I don't know if everyone needs it that what we have, but right. when you find it, like your painting is my cleaning or remodeling. Right. I, I that that's why <laughs> to me, like what like I was saying, like I'm okay if, if if I wasn't making a living doing this enough to have a nice house and a nice car, mm-hmm. or whatever, you know, and like like said, you know, going to I you know, like like buying a couple tickets and going to, you know, Hollywood or Hollywood Horror, um, uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, Halloween Horror Nights yeah. or something like, yeah. like, you know, that would like I'm lucky. I like I feel grateful. I'm I'm, I'm right I'm, that I'm in a position. Like if Jess said, "Hey, let's go to dinner tonight," they'd be like, "I'm not going to be like, I don't know, we're strapped. Yeah. Like I can right. go." Right. But if it if it was if I was strapped and I had yeah. to stay in someone's spare room, I would still be doing exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, because this is better than all that other stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, they say, you know, if you enjoy what you do, yeah. you'll never work a day in your yeah. life. And eventually I, the money will come. I agree. But, but, you know, I would rather do what I love for $20,000 a year than do something I fucking hate for a million a year. Yeah. Well, I, I think, just. I think that's what Colby, that was the problem yeah. with what Colby was doing. And luckily it's worked out. That's something my dad always said. He said, look, you know, don't do it for the money. Yes. Because if you're good at it and you love it, the money will come. It so will. Don't focus mm-hmm. on that. Um, you know, and he was, I agree he with was that. right. I agree with that. He 100%. was a douchebag in a lot of ways, but in that sense, he was right. Yeah. Yeah. Is he still alive? No. No. Oh. He died when I was in prison. Oh, did yeah. he? Okay. Would he visit you in prison? He visited me a few times in prison. A few times. My mom came every two weeks, but he came maybe three times. Wow. Your mom came every two weeks. Every two weeks for... Uh, when I was at Coleman for 12 years. Well, oh, you were at Coleman? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I was in the county jail for a year, so she didn't do that at that period of time. She came a few times. But when I got to Coleman, it was every two weeks. No I shit. I think she missed a month one time wow. when she had her stroke. Oh, wow. That's a good mom right there. Yeah. Yeah. She, she, was, she, was a, she was a gangster. Wow. Yeah. My mom was a thug. What was the worst <laughs> part of prison? Um... Because you were a lot of years in there, so you yeah, had time to adapt. Years, yeah, um, it's uh, you know it's it's funny because like probably the worst things. Um, I heard the food's great. The, you know, so <laughs> here's the you know the problem with the the, the food is that um, you know it wasn't great, but. I never expected it to be great. Like, like when we well, did, yeah. like, but, but I mean, yeah. like, oh, you'd be shocked how these guys complain. Are you serious? Oh, like, you fucking believe they're serving yeah. us this shit? It's like, well, wait a second. Like it's a fucking Michelin, yeah. you know, uh, restaurant. Yeah, it's like, bro, well, like when you were selling crack on the corner, yeah. you were robbing banks. Exactly. Did you think, well, if I get arrested and go to prison for ten years, at least they'll serve me good food? Like, yeah, no. yeah. I thought I'd saw Shawshank. Slop. Yeah. Like it's gray. Exactly. It's a gray thing yeah. that you're going to eat and maybe it has some maggots in it yeah. you'll get used to it yeah pick them out um and that's what i genuinely thought so when i first got there i was amazed at how good the food was wow you know and it, the problem is it's very repetitious but oh you get the same thing like every monday every yeah, tuesday yeah, kind of like there's more like a a, a three-week cycle ah, okay so you do get a lot of the same stuff and there were some meals where you're like and eh, i used to say they'd be like this meal this fucking sucks and i'd be like that's a challenging meal it's a yeah. challenge. Was so, it enough, though, to fill you up? It was enough. So really? First of all, wow. I'd say 30% of the meals were not only ex- acceptable, they were good. Wow. Like fried chicken, pizza. Yeah. You know, like they had hamburger day. Wow. Um, you got french fries. You know, look. Were it's they like cr- summer camp, guys. Right. Were they crispy <laughs> french fries from McDonald's? No, they yeah. weren't. But yeah. you're in prison. Right. Suck it up. Yeah. Um. You know, but- so there were, and then there were some meals where it was like, like, I didn't like this meal, but like it was, you know, rice and beans. Like, yeah. I don't like it, but the Mexican guys love yeah, it. Yeah, right. You know, so it, that wasn't my meal. Right. Sometimes they served liver. Guys would have tons of liver. Ugh. I can't stand liver. Yeah. But there were guys like, bro, liver, you're going to you gonna eat your liver cock? Oh like, my no. God. Yeah. Like here, take right. it. And there's the thing. You can eat out of your locker. Like you, you, oh, go you to can com- Well, you can go to commissary, so you can get a soup. Okay. You know, you can buy soups. You can buy some stuff from commissary if you have a job, if people send you money or something. So if you don't like it, well, then you you say, well, bro, go down to your locker. So it's like, not just candy bars at the commissary. No, no. There's other stuff as Oh, no, well. there's other stuff. Okay. So 
anyway, you know, I would say that the food was much better than I thought, much better than I thought. You know, it's not perfect, but and listen, and this is another thing kills me. Like they give you, they call them holiday meals, right? Mm-hmm. For like Thanksgiving. Yeah. Like, this is like this is like your yeah. mom made Thanksgiving turkey stuffing, the whole bit. Yeah. Sick to your stomach, so much nice. food that it's it's insane. Same thing with you know Christmas. Same thing with yeah. you know. Listen, they it was so funny for like Halloween and stuff. Yeah. Like, or not Halloween for um, I think it was like New Year's. Like they would literally close all the units down and they. They have you come out in a in a line, and you go and you get cookies, and you get hot chocolate. Holy shit! And I would sit there, and I'd think, and guys would be like, "Man, you gonna go get your hot chocolate? Man, that's some bullshit." I was like, "Bet you're gonna be in the line." Though. Yeah, exactly. And they're like, <laughs> "Yeah." And and it's like, first of all, it's humiliating, but secondly, you don't deserve that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's like. This is insane. They give yeah. you a Christmas bag. They give you a – you don't know what a Christmas bag is. Christmas bag is a bag, and they give you, like, potato chip, little different types of potato chips you can't buy. Yeah. And they'll give you different stuff. And guys would complain. Oh, my God. When I got first got locked up, we used to get two of these. They were twice as big. And then it went down to one. Now the bag's half as big. It's uh-huh. like, bro, you're a bank robber. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're giving you a Christmas bag. Uh huh. They have a Christmas tree in the unit. Oh my God. Listen, one time, one time they didn't put the Christmas tree up in the unit. Yeah. They weren't going to. And so I said to the, the, uh, the head orderly was yeah. a, uh, he was a biker. Yeah. He didn't want to do it. And I went, bro, where's the Christmas tree? He's like, yeah, we're not doing it. I ain't doing that shit. And I went, what do you mean you're not doing it? He's like, I'm not doing it. And he goes, why? He was, we're in prison. I went, whoa, whoa, whoa. first of all, I said, you're leaving in a year. Yeah. I said, I'm going to be here a long time. I said, and guys used to do this too, where I'd say, hey, well, where do you live? And they'd be like, well, I live in Tampa. I said, bro, you've been here 10 years. you got another five years to go. You live in B3. Yeah. Like, you could tell yourself yeah. that, oh, this ain't my house. Yeah. Listen, I lived in B4. Yeah. So I'm like, I live here. I want I want the Christmas tree. Yeah. I, w- I got, I went to the counselor and I said, look, I want the Christmas tree up. Why don't we have a Christmas tree? And they'd be like, well, they don't want to put it up. I go, who? Billy? Yeah. Billy, the jackass with the with the handlebar mustache. So, said, well, can I put it up? Yeah. I, I said, I, I, I live here. I want to see the Christmas tree. Right. And she goes, fucking cocks. <laughs> she said, listen, you get as many people. She goes, I'm leaving in an hour. You have as many people in the unit want. And if there's enough people that ask for it, I'll put it up. I had like 20, 25 guys go and knock on the door and go, Christmas tree. Nice. Guys were like, I'm not doing that. I go, bro, you ever want anything from me? Yeah. You need to go do that. Like, you right. fucking dick. Yeah. And then they'd go and they'd knock on the thing. Listen, we got the Christmas tree. Bro. Yeah. Good. It's stupid. Right. But not was, really. Yeah. But it's, you know, that's your home right now. They have MP3 players there. Yeah. That cuts, I swear, that cuts 30% of your time off by having music. Yeah. You get to walk the track, you get to listen to it all the time. The problem is, too, in What, do you prison, check it in and out? That type you, thing? No, no. You, you, you can buy it. Oh, okay. And you can download They sell you oh. music for $1.33 a download for, for your music. Well, that's what we fucking pay on iTunes. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, but this is... I would have said it was expensive. Cause no. Because always say that it was like... It's on expensive the sh- when you have $5 in your fucking account. Yeah. Yeah, then it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you did that, uh, and you could listen to the music, and that's it's big because... It's so loud in prison. People yeah. are always like, oh, it's lonely and it's quiet. No, the no hell it's, it's not. Lo- yeah, it's Pray loud. Pray for, for loneliness. You know, I was shocked to find out there's a whole dating online thing with inmates yeah. and people outside. Yeah. We actually had a fucking employee, a cleanup tech, that sought out a guy at Coleman. Okay. Ended up marrying that motherfucker when he got out. No had doubt. a kid with him. And then, of course, now they're divorced. But... She was like 47, and he was like 23. Yeah, that, that, I can see that happening. That I didn't know time. that you guys could do the dating thing online. Yeah, well, you have somebody else kind of do it. You write a profile. Somebody else puts you on. There's like pen pal, whatever. Yeah. And then they get on Core Links. And so Core Links is the email system. Mm-hmm. So you basically send – it's almost like a text message. Like, you know, you send an email. Then they go on the – they get it. Then they can type something, and they can send it back to you. And – um, they can come and visit. Uh, yeah, she did that. Yeah, she came and visited. Eventually, they guess they got married. She put money on his book. A lot of guys I'm will sure. pretend, yeah, to just be to get the money. Super interested, right? Uh, in some woman, so that she's putting a few. Because let's face let's it, let's be honest. What what does it take for a woman 
that's in the free world to seek out a guy that's incarcerated for many, many years. Yeah. What what is she really looking for? I mean, it's probably very safe to her. Like, yeah. you know, she's got it. She can say she has a boyfriend. He doesn't take a lot of time. <laughs> she He needs her. You know, it's semi-companionship. Um, but there's also just weirdos where there are women in prison who are contacted by guys that literally want to date a woman in prison. They're fascinated by yeah. their crime. They're fascinated by that she's locked up. The prison panty thing. I found out about that, too. They love that there's, shit. There's, there's a are, lot of shit, people man. People are disturbed. You know that more yeah. than anybody. People yeah. are weirdos. They've got some crazy fetishes. It just seems like, you know, these women are so desperate for a relationship and they're tired of getting fucked over, so they feel like a guy that's incarcerated is safe. Is not only safe, but has their undivided attention. Oh, oh and no doubt they that's do. what it is. Well, and then think about it too, and then they get out and they think they're going to be um, loyal. Oh and yeah, respect, and they're not. Fuck no. This guy's a he's a yeah, scumbag. He's a scumbag. Um, he was a drug dealer. You know what's funny is, so I was on a program called American Greed. Uh huh. This is I you, love that show. Okay, I'll, you've been on that. Yeah, they did a Shut one hour the special. Front door. I love yeah. it. Uh, and it's all here in Tampa. Like, yeah. Because you know, it was Ybor City. No shit. Is where I did. I I'll bought ch- 109 check it out. houses in Ybor City. Oh, love it. You probably bought some that I own now. <laughs> Maybe. I've owned a bunch on Columbus. Yeah, um, that's yeah. where mine is. Yeah. Columbus and Ninth. Yeah. Uh, I owned, uh, God, I owned like five or six houses on Amelia Street. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I, th- you've never heard this one, Connor. You're going to like this. I had a guy. So first of all, let me tell you, SIS is like the FBI inside prison. Like they investigate the other officers. They investigate more complex crimes. Uh So um, I, after I'd been locked up, I'll wrap it up. Uh, After I'd been, after I'd been locked up, I came out on uh, American Greed, did a one hour special. I started getting letters from a guy and he said his name, Ted Underhill. Well, I don't know if Ted Underhill is a famous character by Chevy Chase. Um, oh, it's just, okay. it's ridiculous, right? Okay. It's, it's Underhill and such and such, you know, law firm, whatever. Uh-huh. So the guy writes me a letter and says, Dear Mr. Cox, I'm a, he said he was a lawyer. They've taken up my case. They've appealed to the, you know, everything oh about, everything God. about the letter was wrong. Yeah. You know, the district court has said, okay, well, there's no district court. Yeah. And the DE, the DA, there's no DA. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a U.S. attorney. Mm-hmm. You know, everything's wrong. And he, he just, for two, for two pages, he went on and on. About how he was gonna getting my, how they were gonna have this uh, this uh, a model that was had been it was infatuated with. She was gonna be waiting in a limo when I oh, got out. Good like God. It, was, it was so just stupid. Yeah. So I read the whole thing and I'm kind of like laughing yeah. about it. And then in like the last paragraph or two, he says, "You'll no longer have to eat food where the inmates um, have uh, masturbated into the food, and you're eating toenails. You'll no longer have to be subject to rapes. And don't oh. worry, uh, don't worry." The model loves the fact that you look like a monkey, and I would, oh. and and don't be don't be offended by that. He said lots of people look like monkeys. It's not a big deal. Like he really like what the like, fuck. But I'm reading this letter like it's already ridiculous. Yeah. Here's the funny thing about it is I take the letter, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, I I put it in my locker. No yeah, big deal. Yeah. About a month later, I get another letter from the same from, guy. Yeah. Good news. Your appeal's going well. We've spoken with the judge. Um, un, uh, un, you know, he's agreed to knock off this much time, blah, blah, blah. Writes that letter. You'll be released. Your new release date is next year. We're trying to get you into a halfway house now. But once again, starts talking about uh, toenails in the food and, uh, you know, I Whatever. Put, the, yeah. put the letter up. A month later, I get another letter and it says, uh, Unfortunately, they've charged me with another crime and they've added an additional 50 years, although my sentence was reduced. They've added. Uh, this goes on for, you know, he did miss a month or two. Yeah. Two, three years. I Holy have like, shit. I end up with like 30 letters in a wow. row. Wow. So one day I get a call to SIS and I go there to SIS and I knock on the door and it's a guy named Saccone. Uh, uh, I remember Saccone goes, he said, um, Cox, we, we got a really disturbing letter in the mail. And uh, he, he has it, and he goes, um, it looks like this guy may have been writing you. Do you know who this is? And I go, Underhill. Yeah. That's Ted Underhill. And he goes, do you know him? And I went, no, no, I don't know him. I assume he saw one of these programs. Yeah. 
he talks about my victims yeah. and how they're going to they, at this point um, he's gonna they're going to, to kidnap me and, and, and there's there's a plot to kill me yeah, and yeah, yeah. They, they've talked to the FBI for me and and I'm like, you know, it's Ted, Ted under, under Hill. And I go through the whole thing and he goes, I mean, he's talking about you being hurt and them kidnapping you and doing this. He's like and he goes, You have other letters like this? And I go, Yeah, I have about like twenty or thirty of them. I've kept I've kept almost all of them. Uh huh. And he went, You don't like Sacone was a really cool guy. He goes, You don't have to put up with this. And I go, Nah, bro. I said, It's okay. I said, yeah. it's, it's like we're doing time together. Yeah. I said, He's down for me, right? Like uh-huh. he's like, We're I said, it's good. He goes, he goes, do you ever write them back? I said, no. I said, the the, the it's different addresses. There's obviously they, the, the letters yeah. come back because I did write them one time and the letter yeah. came back. Uh-huh. I said, no. I said, but I said this guy's doing time with me. Uh-huh. Like we're he's 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 in this with me. And yeah. he goes, he's start. The goes like, are you crazy? Uh-huh. And I'm like, no. I said, it's funny because I get the letters. Did right. you read the part about the monkey? Yeah. And, and he's like, he said you look like a monkey. I said, I know it's funny. <laughs> and he's like, the cone's like. <laughs> okay, I don't. I go, can I have the letter? I'm gonna add it to my collection. Yeah. And he's like, I. Yeah, if you want the letter. <laughs> so you never found out who it was. No, he eventually he stopped writing one time for six months. I probably had ended up with twenty or thirty letters. Wow. I don't know what happened to letters either, but they were hilarious. But there are weirdos. Yeah. Oh, I got letters from girls that had seen. Oh, I'm sure. And and wanted to communicate mm-hmm. with me. I, I never wrote them back. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a, I did have one guy who said he wanted me to draw something for him uh-huh. and said he'd put money on my books if I did. Ooh. He put he ended up putting like 50 bucks on my books. And then I sent him a picture. And he came back. He said, could you do another one in color? I said, yeah, but the problem is you need colored pencils. Yeah. You need this, you know that. And he said, how much would that be? I said, that would be a couple hundred bucks. So he goes, okay. He put $200 on my books. And um, I What would you draw for him? I drew a picture of uh, – I drew a picture. It was kind of a kind of like um, – did you ever see um, – it's famous. I actually have a picture over there. It's, it's a metropol- uh, Metropolis. Yeah. Yeah, the robot from Met- Metropolis. And okay. a couple different designs. Like, it wasn't anything That's weird. That's what it he was, requested. He wanted that. Okay. And then he think he wanted a picture of Madonna. I think he was gay because he mentioned yeah. Madonna like three times in yeah. the first letter. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's, he's, he loves Madonna. So uh-huh. It's a little odd. Um, and when I read the letters, and mentally in my head, I could hear a lisp. Um. Nice guy though. Put yeah. the put the uh, put put right. uh, put money on my books. And I remember I had a friend who uh, in there. He's like, bro, what if this guy like wants to come see you? And I go, he can come see me. Yeah, he gives a shit. And he goes, yeah, but I go, he's putting money on my books. I got mm-hmm. a lot of time, bro. Yeah. And he goes, what if, what if he like wants like like a hug or something? And I go, it's just a hug. I got a lot of time. He's putting money. He goes, what if he <laughs> wants a kiss? And I go. I mean, yeah. it's just a kiss. I mean, <laughs> he goes, what if it's more than, what if he wants like maybe to make out or something? I go, I got a lot of time. Okay. You know, <laughs> that's awesome. He was just like, you're a sick, sick. That's bugger. awesome. But he eventually, uh, he dropped off too. Yeah. Well, they all do. <laughs> they can't do the time for that long, right? No, no, they can't do, they can't do my time in their living room. My God. And you know, everybody thinks that rapes are rampant. Oh, in prison. In prison. And it, my experience, which is not, you know, right. which is limited. They're not. No, no, not at all. No, uh, it, it, it's also like the you have to join a gang. Yeah, and you're gonna get stabbed, and yeah. you're gonna stop it. Yeah, stop it, man. And yeah. now look, there are prisons. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Yeah, I think federal might be safer than definitely. Yeah, federal space. Yeah, way safer than state. And every state is different. Yeah. Like California state prisons yeah. are, are horribly are horrible. notorious for for extreme violence and yeah. gangs and and rapes. Yeah. Um. I think the difference is, and I always say this, like the problem with most federal prisons is that if you get stabbed in federal prison or Mm -hmm. in prison in general, like you had it coming. Like Uh. they didn't just randomly stab you. Like you ran up a debt. You didn't pay. Yeah. Um, they probably came to you and said, look, you owe owe Tom 400 bucks. You, you've been gambling. You you owe him 400 bucks. Uh. You have to either work out a deal to pay it somehow or make payments, or you have to check in and go to another prison. And guys went, fuck him, he ain't going to do nothing. Okay, uh-huh. now he's not going to sue you. Yeah. You're going to get stabbed. He's going to stab you, yeah. Uh, you know, And the other thing is, like, in rape, like, there's tons of gay guys in prison. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they don't need to rape anybody. Right. You right. need to buy the guy a new pair of tennis shoes. Right. <laughs> he's now your boyfriend. Right, you know? Like, right. that's it. It's not exactly. a big deal. So, How many of the guards are dirty? So when I was there, I would say not many. 
mm. not many. Not that there weren't some. Yeah. You know, look, you don't to do some real damage. You, there can be fifty guards that if two of them are dirty, they can be bringing in cell phones, oh, drugs. Yeah. Like it could really, yeah. really make things a problem for the rest of the institution in general. Problem is after COVID, there was they went through and they asked a lot of the guards that have been there for a long time to please retire. Ah. So they retired and they hired new guards at a much lower rate. The problem with those guards is the senior guard in Coleman Low right now has like two years experience. Uh, he doesn't know how things work the way this guy who's been doing it for 15 years. Right, right. So he's not on top of it. And they are not making very much money at all. So well, that's why I find – Well, they're – yeah, they're ripe for – there's supposedly there was a shakedown at the low uh, a couple months ago. They mm-hmm. pulled like 200 phones. This 1,800 oh guys, they got God. like 200 cell phones. Wow. 1,800 guys. It's insane. My buddy Pete said, oh, if you want a cell phone, he goes, you can get a cell phone. Like this, it's not it's not a joke. You could you can make a call. You can get a call. You can text you people. You think that you they can... would block the cell towers, though, around well, the present. Also, then that interferes yeah, with, the, with, with the guards. The guards, yeah. It's, you know. So cell phones, drugs, easy to get? Yeah. 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 So obviously – there's guards bringing those in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So now it's worse than worse than ever when I was there. But then again, I don't, you know, I wasn't trying to use a cell yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had multiple times guys offer me, well, if you, if you need a cell phone or if you need to use one, yeah. no, I'm good. Yeah. I don't have anybody I want to text or call. I'm mm-hmm. not interested in getting tied up in that. And then, of course, you've got your number in the history now. Now yeah. they check it against oh, your phone yeah. record. And like, yep. oh, you obviously somebody's calling somebody on your, you were right. involved. Go to the shoot for 30 right. days or 60 right. days. Or, but, um, Back to you. You're way more interesting. No. <laughs> Connor hates me. Like, Connor, like everybody, like if guys, people come on the show and they think I'm entertaining and funny uh-huh. and everything. And mo- half the time I'll glance at Connor and he just, he's disgusted by me. Connor's not easily impressed. No, apparently. he's not. Yeah. He's not. He's over me. At the, I think the first month or two he thought, hey, pretty interesting guy. Yeah. After a year, he's like. He's yeah, like, he's I've heard of, all these fucking stories. I'm over it. Douchebag. Yeah. It's like my girlfriend. She's not impressed anymore. Yeah. She's like, okay. You need to do something different then. You got about Let's 10 hours of entertainment in yeah. you. And then it's just, I'm over it. Yeah. At this point. Um, yeah. So that's it. Or, or, or unless you, can you think of anything else? You want people to go to your channel? Not that any, not anything. That, anything? Uh, anything? I say, um, Ezra, you want to bring up, maybe talk about the, um, this is much more, you want to get more involved in it, uh, think of it stuff. Oh, yeah, like the yeah. training stuff? Yeah, the training stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's much more relaxed than these guys thought, I yeah. think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, this is interesting. It's definitely, definitely different. Definitely Danny, Danny will be better. <laughs> Danny will be better. Danny's more professional. <laughs> he has, like, a real studio. Mm. He's got real stuff. He's, like, a, you know, yeah. he's better at it. He's, we, like. What we, what we got? The, 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 we got two black, uh, two black uh, tarps. And because we, we used to run the we used to run the podcast talking decon, yeah. We have two black uh, um, tarps and then these and these mics. That's it. We and we take put it up, take it down. That's it. Man. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's amazing how professional this comes off. Totally. Like when, when you walk, go to the channel, look at it, you're like, wow. Like, yeah. oh, they're in a studio. They're, yeah, 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 my yeah. Living room. yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. It's what you make it look like. Um, exactly. Yeah. This is way more than we had. Mm-hmm. So you want to talk? Uh, uh, people getting involved? Yeah. And- so like you know, not everybody wants to own a franchise. Right. Maybe some people just want to learn how to do crime scene cleanup and do it as a side gig or do it on their own. Like and you so, did. yeah, just like I did. So what I did is I created courses online. They can just take the course and I teach them how to do everything that they need to know. And it's, you know, crime scene cleaning dot thinkific dot com. That's it. Dot what? What is it? Thinkific. That's a teaching platform. OK. Um, you can put any courses on there. You can. Hey, how do you do mortgage fraud? Right. Make a course on that. Probably fucking sell out. I, um. So can you get certified? Yeah. So there's no like national certification for this type of thing. Right. So um, we give you a certification that same we give our franchisees. Yeah. F- and, you know, contracts, how to market. This this business is hard to market, as right. you can imagine. You know, buy one, get one free dead body. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. Um, what about the, uh, it's the same thing. You don't get a certif to, to clean up like meth labs. You don't get, you get like a cert, there's not a national thing. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. You okay. have to have a license to give a pe- person a mortgage, but yeah, you don't yeah. have to have a license to, to clean up a meth lab. clean up a meth lab. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It's all about the money. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
Yeah. You can find the courses and, and your YouTube channel. Uh, um, is- yeah, the YouTube, like I said, if you if you like that type of stuff, it's it's uncensored. So yeah. if if you if you're squeamish, maybe not for you. Yeah. But you know, just go to YouTube on crime scene cleaning, and uh, you've got everything there. Mm-hmm. Appreciate you guys watching. Do me a favor, and if you like the video, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, so you get notified of videos just like this. Uh, also, leave me a comment, uh, share the video, which is something I forget to tell people to do. But everybody's constantly commenting in the, in the in the comment section, like, "Bro, I don't understand why your channel, you know, isn't blowing up." Well, you're not sharing the video, so share the video, hit the like thing, leave the comment, do all that. And look, if you really like the video and you're like, "I don't understand," like this is a great video, it doesn't have enough, uh, doesn't, he doesn't have enough subscribers and he doesn't have enough views. Well, you know what you could do is you could just thank me by hitting the thank you button, and it allows you to donate like a dollar ninety nine. $2.99. Do you have that? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I think 40, so. I have a bunch of people that have done uh, $49.99. Mm-hmm. Like, like, and I have a Patreon. <laughs> $10. It's nothing. it's nothing. It's nothing. Okay. Anyway, that's enough. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. See you.